The writer of these pages is I, both the scribe who moves through many realities as teacher and author. I am linked to the Great Pyramid as a creational force having come here through the gates of the Twelve Pyramid Matrix to create realities. Many will remember and quote my teachings in texts, scrolls, stone tablets, keys of knowledge or encoded genetic memories to be found at the end of each cycle. I have entrusted my original teachings to those who were my priests and priestesses who must one day restore this knowledge in full definition. At that time they shall incarnate as the teachers and healers of their timelines. These readings shall be found at the end of a cycle which transcends time and space and they shall remember and I shall help and guide them if you have come to this place you have come to the temple that will take you to 12 pyramids of light I'm here to tell you a story of 12 pyramids that came through that which you call the void to enter this world and create a physical reality in which souls can experience at the time of my writing these 12 pyramids stood on the physical planet placed there by design Though each pyramid may appear to the human eye to look like the others, remember that each one is unique in frequency and purpose. Within each of the 12 pyramids were three entities for a total of 36 creational forces. And these 36 forces set down upon the earth life forms of different shapes and designs. They used energies of light and the tones of crystals to create. When the 36 were complete they left the surface of the planet in their pyramids and remained outside of the physical planet, where they created a grid system which linked together all things on and off the planet. This was in the form of a matrix web. At that time, I, both who would be a scribe and teacher within the matrix came to this place and wrote this book for you to find at this time. Within the book are your keys. A great pyramid was built by my design on the surface of the planet. It would be a duplicate of that which is above and would link to it. And I would come through this pyramid many times in many forms to guide and teach the souls who would come to this place. Your coming here has unlocked the door for those who were the priests and priestesses of a time once entered in the story of humanity. We shall now journey to the first of 12 pyramids that waits beyond this reality yet holds its creation in place. My story begins as 12 pyramids were positioned around a planet you call Earth. They remain in higher frequency until my story has been told and the souls have left. Each pyramid was to bring meaning and purpose based on their own programming. My story unfolds in the land of Chem, known best to you as Egypt. The pyramid over Egypt links with the hourglass, with time and with illusion. From here the nature of time and space, cause and effect, duality, were created. And so the cycles of time began. The 12 pyramids moved into position and through consciousness created physical forms based on geometric patterns that would follow the cycles until the end of time. And the cycles would be calibrated by the number 12 based on the 12 pyramids of creation. These would be known as the cycles of time which would be experienced by each evolving civilization. And these timepieces would work in synchronicity with the pyramids and the matrix. The gears of these clocks would be round and seen as wheels within wheels or clocks within clocks, marking cycles within cycles. And these cycles would appear to begin and end as they move through the synchronicities of their creation. As keeper of time I would perpetuate the illusion of the cycles of time. It is my job to recalibrate each cycle wherein time would take on a new dimension. To mark these cycles a geophysical timepiece was created on the Earth's surface. It linked to the matrix through a portal of energy. This portal was created by the 12 pyramids in their likeness and was placed on the center of the planet. It would be known as the Great Pyramid and would maintain the illusion of time. And the soul sparks emerged into the matrix through the rainbow prism of light and color. As I watched from above and below, The pyramid above the Middle East is the focal point for the first story of humanity. You would know this place as the cradle of civilization, the story of Adam and Eve and their bloodline. 
It is from this pyramid that a tale was told of the first humans who came to play on Earth's soil and give it life. Their very existence would be created as a metaphor for the creational patterns of humanity's earliest roots. And the sacred symbols of this creation would be genetically encoded into those who would come to be part of this land. For it is these souls who would awaken at the end of this cycle to lead the others into the next creation. The Middle East would carry the frequency of this information throughout the cycle. Much blood would be shed by the keepers of the secrets and their descendants on this soil where creation was said to spring forth. It is in this region that the Lords of Light and Darkness would play out their earliest games battles that would continue until the end of this cycle and the beginning of the Golden Age of Light to be brought forth by the keeper of this pyramid, one known as Tashi Ra El Amun. Tashi Ra El Amun will embrace the souls and take them to the pyramid where they would find healing from all they had endured on their earth journey. And there would be a new beginning. A new tree of life would spring forth from this pyramid its matrix joining with the other 11 pyramids of creation. Darkness would return to light and the souls would be free and healed. It is time for humanity to return to this pyramid to heal in the womb of creation, to move through its matrix of geometric shapes and understand how the first man and woman were created. A pyramid was placed above the grids over Europe creating great mythologies for the souls to experience. The soul who creates through this pyramid goes by the frequency, Trio Genes the Storyteller. He is one who can capture the imagination of one soul or all souls as he weaves the patterns of his stories throughout the energies of the matrix. These patterns would appear to repeat in cycles, each with its own cast of characters incorporated in a body of work that would have no beginning nor end but would weave forever creating new stories. Woven into the fabric of each myth are the keys of the creational process. These myths would be regarded as the great mysteries of the creation of humanity. And these myths would take on many dimensions and lessons in which the souls could select one or more roles. Myths are not bound by space nor time and may be entered as the souls may desire. Let us enter the halls of the pyramid of mythological rendering. There you will be able to interact in all myths at the same time by merely placing your consciousness into their matrix. For it is here that I, both the scribe, write many of the storylines as dictated to me by the souls. Perhaps you and I can create a myth of our own. For in truth, all is myth. Myth is all. The Atlantean Pyramid creates the illusion of realities in time on the Earth plane. The soul who oversees this pyramid goes by the frequency, Arlis Kokhizel. In the Temple of the Crystals the Goddess sits, she whose consciousness creates all and everything from within. Through this crystal matrix a race of evolved humans was born. And when it was time for those souls to once again submerge in the sea of creation to evolve into a new experience the crystals would echo the harmonics and the souls would remember and align for transition. The Atlantean Pyramid has great mythology about an ancient time when man used his gift of intuition and worked with spirit. It tells of priests and priestesses who used massive crystals and walked with giants and strange creatures on the surface of the planet. This pyramid tells of I, both known as Thoth the Atlantean or Tehuti, who ruled the land of Atlantis for thousands of years known there by many names and descriptions. It is written that before the great civilization of Atlantis fell, I went with my consort and our high priests and priestesses in great spaceships to create a new home and a new civilization. That this place would be the land of Chem, known to you as Egypt. 
that I and others from Atlantis would record and store information in great libraries in a place to be known as the Halls of Amenti, Amenti meaning mankind. Listen now for the echoes of their tones within your mind. And many would search for these records in the quest to remember why they have come here and who they are and they would feel that they have greater purpose in this timeline and seek to find out what that purpose might be. The Atlantean Pyramid would create tales of the fall of this great civilization as warning to those who would walk the earth at the time of this reading, and humanity would worry about the destruction of its earth home. Fear not as the souls need only remember their way home into the light, for there is no beginning nor is there an end. And I, both the Atlantean, shall now take you to the Pyramid of Atlantis so you may experience all that you are, and you will understand what happened in the game of light versus darkness, and you will remember what you must do. On our journey through the matrix of the pyramids we come upon one that is both vague and fluid in density. The Lemurian Pyramid is one of two pyramids that creates a storyline about a reality that supposedly once existed in third dimension but has evolved into higher frequency. The soul who oversees this pyramid goes by the frequency, Tekopo Rima. The Lemurian Pyramid creates the illusions of dimensions or levels of reality. The pyramid can be found in the grid over the region known as the Pacific Ocean. It has sometimes been viewed by passing sailors on long voyages in the open seas. As they move between the portals of their minds and those of reality, they have seen such a pyramid before them. The true nature of this pyramid is to maintain and enforce awareness of higher levels of experience for if mankind can understand that there is more than just his physical expression he will be in readiness to move to his next level of consciousness believing that his Lemurian ancestors rose to those very heights. Go then out of this pyramid of Lemuria, join forces with those who create this matrix. Understand the nature of higher creation in the sea of celestial evolution. It was here in the area of Tibet that a pyramid was placed in frequency. Those who followed named it the place of Shamhala. The soul who oversees this pyramid goes by the frequency signature, Su Li. This is the creational pyramid which connects us with our spiritual wisdom and knowledge. It is within this pyramid that spiritual teachings are created based on the needs of each culture as it evolves. And it was my job, as scribe, to see to it that these teachings were recorded through oral traditions, in sacred texts and scrolls, within the energies of crystalline bodies, in stone formations, in hieroglyphs and pictographs, in channeled manuscripts and other art forms. It is in this pyramid that the entities known as spiritual masters and teachers, angels, gods and goddesses, call and spiritual guides, originated, Many souls will have memories of arriving on planet Earth through this pyramid, then taking the form of Tibetan monks. It is written that these teachers have secret scrolls hidden away since the dawn on mankind. These teaching can be found within the matrix of this pyramid given in keys at the end of this cycle. Enter now this pyramid where these scrolls await you. Join with the energies of the three creators of this matrix. Read their words, heed the messages, then you will know. The Pyramid of Dreams is located in the grids over Australia. The soul who creates through this pyramid is the Dream Keeper. When souls go to their place of sleep time, it is there that they meet the Dream Keeper. It is within the energies of this region that the chosen priests and priestesses incarnated to guard and protect the creational knowledge stored within the matrix of dream time. This knowledge is given in symbols during dream time to those ready to access it. Once given, the soul may return to the physical with the ability to move back and forth between realities. 
and that soul shall understand how to create in dream time and how that creation becomes manifest in the physical. Within his matrix they may select experiences just as they do in their physical time. The dream keeper takes the souls to his matrix of never-ending dreams where anything can happen and usually does. And here the souls can fly and be free. All souls visit the dream keeper and are linked to his matrix by way of their dream experiences. The dream keeper helps them resolve problems and teaches the true nature of their experiences. Some will see this dream time as the true reality for it is as real as anything else within the matrix. A part of all souls remains connected to the matrix and the dream keeper to reconnect over and over the dreamscapes continuing after consciousness returns to the physical body. Before you go to sleep, ask the dream keeper to show you your destiny and awaken your consciousness. The first pyramid is presently located in the grid over the area you call Antarctica, which would be considered a portal to other planetary grid system. The soul who oversees this pyramid goes by the frequency signature Exerthanius. The function of this pyramid is to create and guide experiences linked to the comings and goings of extraterrestrial entities who were part of the history of planet Earth. And there were many entities from these faraway worlds that were once part of the story of your planet. Their journeys encoded within the Matrix by Exerthanius and his two assistants. Their souls having experience through the energy of this pyramid as those who come from Sirius, Nibiru, Orion, Lyra, the Pleiades, Mars, Andromedia, Arcturus, Vega, Venus, Jupiter among others familiar to you. And so the storylines would read that these entities came to your planet in great spaceships and interacted with those who lived on the planet, in the water and others below the surface. And there was created a tale of a great spaceship buried beneath a giant lion who serves as a marker and similar stone markers were left on every place created in the heavens which linked to the matrix. The experiences in other worlds are as real as your soul experience at this time on planet Earth. Those souls would carry the memories of these distant worlds often as a truer reality than that which they came here to embrace. And when this book is found the ice shall melt from this place, revealing starships created by this pyramid, left behind as reminders of their work and interaction on your planet. And the energies of this pyramid shall still be read in the matrix of this total creation and experienced by those who would come to these creational forces for guidance and Exerthanius shall guide their souls through this geometric matrix so they may remember and join with other expressions of their creation. And soulmates shall meet in many worlds and forms, and they shall join in union, then be thrust apart to once again rejoin in other alien forms. There does exist a pyramid above the Arctic whose purpose is balancing the poles of the planetary grid and of consciousness once frozen in time now melting down and shifting on all levels. Ha ah, Monarch Ice Crystal. The keeper of this pyramid is known by the frequency name, Sophia Hokmat, creator of all knowledge and wisdom. Sophia creates an ever-expanding body of knowledge flowing through the consciousness matrix where souls experience. That they may study the natural laws of creation, then learn and develop their abilities to think and understand that which is occurring in the realities. For it is in Sophia's matrix that the souls understand the connection of all things to this matrix, to the twelve pyramids, and to the central source that acts as a hub in the center of all of this, the creational energy that gives life to the twelve pyramids, and all that they create as expressions of the geometric design. Within this frozen monolith one understands how our soul is created and how that soul can manifest in many realities at the same time, taking knowledge from the matrix with each experience. Within this pyramid, one can create and access great wisdom by a mere thought, and that thought is linked to all other thoughts which bind the souls together. 
and that in one nanosecond of your timeline, all information is learned and understood by all. It is now time to travel to the halls of knowledge created within this pyramid of ice and light. You will combine your mind and consciousness with the matrix. Then you will understand all things in your world. There is a pyramid in frequency over the Inca ruins of Machu Picchu. It is linked to the Nazca lines creating a pattern of evolution in design. The soul who creates through this pyramid goes by the frequency, Lubalia. Her consciousness speaks to the people of Earth about a time long ago when ancient travels from the stars descended to the surface creating a landscape in which souls would descend from above to experience later to return to her consciousness through her temple. It is within this pyramid that emotions are experienced ranging from lowest frequency to those of pure light energy. The nature of this pyramid is to keep emotions flowing in that which you experience as formless waves of energy which shift within each soul from moment to moment. And the souls shall know all ranges of these emotions for they are in the matrix and they have come to experience the gamut of them all. And the souls will place in highest esteem the frequency of light which is creation and contains all emotions in balance. And they will connect it with that part of their being that links to the source of creation, the heart that which expresses what they shall call love and keeps the soul eternal. They shall strive for this place of higher emotion. In so doing, they will experience great suffering which will help them bring forth higher understanding and the souls will feel torture and torment and love and compassion. And they will place all emotions into words and deeds and great dramas in which they did act. And great works shall result in the expression of their emotions guided by the flow of the emotional matrix. And they shall go to this emotional temple within their souls to find answers to riddles of creation. There they will find their answers, not always as their senses have guided. And each soul shall search until it is ready to enter this pyramid. Once entered it will experience all emotions at one time, with understanding far beyond the comprehension of humanity. Each soul shall embrace all emotions within itself. Come with me now to the pyramid of emotion. Let not all fears blind your way. Throw away all concepts of emotion and see the truth in who you are. I will teach you how to find peace and the balance in your soul. The Mayan Pyramid is in the grid of time and synchronicity. The keeper of the pyramid is Quetzalcoatl. Within the pyramid, timepieces and symbols are created in accordance with the laws of creation. They are carried throughout the matrix, combining all wisdom and knowledge within their design. They fit together as the gears of synchronicity forming the totality of human experience. In dream time and meditation one moves within the matrix attracting the keys that synchronize with needed experiences. And Quetzalcoatl created encoded keys within his timepieces to guide the souls into higher consciousness. He placed his keys within the matrix to be found by those who were him chosen so they may teach humanity about the changes that occur at the end of the cycle. And the two souls who assist Quetzalcoatl operate and maintain the keys as they will be found and the information unlocked. Join me now within the halls of this pyramid as there are keys that will return you to your natural state of being. You will recognize your keys of light. They will open your soul and your consciousness. Quetzalcoatl returns. Darkness emerged from the void moving into the pyramids of consciousness ending as souls cross over the bridges of time, space and illusion. The sacred spirals of geometry guide their journey home. The end of my story takes me to the pyramid over New York City. The soul who oversees this pyramid goes by the frequency Isis for she is the feminine aspect in all that moves through the matrix. It is she who expresses herself in the form of the Earth Mother. She, who is creator of life and evolution. She who sends energy to the matrix that perpetuates the reality in which souls may manifest. She, who has no permanent form, but that of light. It is she that you knew as Sekhmet and Hathor, among other creational forces. It is she who creates from her pyramid, weaving her creation into the fabric of time. 
her energies move through the matrix touching all that is in creation, all that flows through consciousness, all and everything that is both old and new, for they are one and the same. From her pyramid she brings the matrix full surf creator and destroyer all in one. Travel with me to the pyramid of the feminine, she who now returns to planet earth to express herself in the light harmonics of creation. Visualize yourself in Egypt back in time, the moon is full. You feel a gentle sensation slowly move up through your spine activating all of your chakras as it flows through you. Allow the energies of the tablets and the full moon to activate your soul memory. To this end you travel to Egypt and the Great Pyramid. By chance, on the morning of the 27th you meet a professor of ancient students from England who has organized a dig somewhere in Egypt. He shows you an ancient map of an area that seems familiar to you, yet you don't know why. The professor explains that the map will lead you to six ancient tablets that can only be found on this full moon. He stresses the urgency of leaving immediately. You join the professor and four other men as drive northwest in two jeeps. You drive through the desert until it is dusk. The jeeps stop, everyone gets out. The professor checks his map. You follow the clues hoping to find the lost tablets. You have come to the right place, but after many hours the team stops looking as you have found nothing. Frustrated, you set up camp and try to figure out what went wrong. Hours later you all watch as the full moon is directly above you. The stars speak to you. The wind seems to be echoing an ancient harmonic. Suddenly one of the men shouts something in Egyptian as he looks up in the sky. The full moon appears to be moving as if it were a spacecraft. You hear one tone that seems to pulse 80 through the ethers. Everyone stands up as a pattern manifests in the sky. It suddenly disappears, then reappears on the sand in front of you as a physical tablet. As you all stand there in awe, the tone changes. A second pattern in another color manifests in the sky falling to the earth as another tablet. The tone changes. You watch as a third tablet is formed from the celestial blueprint of the heavens and is placed on the earth before you. A fourth tone is heard. You and your group of stargazers stand transfixed as a fourth pattern emerges from the energies above. The tones and tablets continue to manifest until there are twelve. The spiral of light moves away then blinks out of existence, replaced by the full moon as you have always perceived it. You and the others examine the twelve tablets as the gentle sands sweep over them. You and the professor study the symbols. You carefully load the tablets into a wooden crate to be returned to the people of Earth so they may study them and remember. Please study the tablets. As you view the images on each tablet see what images your body, soul reacts to. You might feel a pressure in your head, a tingling or other sensation. Now close your eyes. Relax your body face, head, shoulders, torso. I, both the Atlantean, master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king, magician, living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amenta, set down for the guidance of those that are to come after these records of the mighty wisdom of great Atlantis. In the great city of K.E.O.R. on the island of U.N.D.A.L., in a time far past, I began this incarnation not as the little men of the present age did the mighty ones of Atlantis live and die, but rather from eon to eon did they renew their life in the halls of Amenta where the river of life flows eternally onward. A hundred times ten have I descended the dark way that led into light, and as many times have I ascended from the darkness into the light my strength and power renewed. Now for a time I descend, and the men of KHEM shall know me no more. But in a time yet unborn will I rise again, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. 
Then beware, O men of Khem, if ye have falsely betrayed my teaching, for I shall cast ye down from your high estate into the darkness of the caves from whence ye came. Betray not my secrets to the men of the north or the men of the south lest my curse fall upon ye. Remember and heed my words, for surely will I return again and require of thee that which ye guard. I even from beyond time and from beyond death will I return, rewarding a punishing as ye have requited your trust. Great were my people in the ancient days, great beyond the conception of the little people now around me, knowing the wisdom of old, seeking far within the heart of infinity knowledge that belonged to earth's youth. Wise were we with the wisdom of the children of light who dwelt among us. Strong were we with the power drawn from the eternal fire. And of all these, greatest among the children of men was my father, T-H-O-T-M-E, keeper of the great temple, link between the children of light who dwelled within the temple and the races of men who inhabited the ten islands. Mouthpiece, after the three, of the dweller of UNAL, speaking to the kings with the voice that must be obeyed. Grew either from a child into manhood, being taught by my father the elder mysteries, until in time there grew within the fire of wisdom, until it burst into a consuming flame. Nought desired I but the attainment of wisdom. Until on a great day the command came from the dweller of the temple that I be brought before him. Few there were among the children of men who had looked upon that mighty face and lived, for not as the sons of men are the children of light when they are not incarnate in a physical body. Chosen was I from the sons of men, taught by the dweller so that his purposes might be fulfilled, purposes yet unborn in the womb of time. Long ages I dwelt in the temple, learning ever and yet ever more wisdom, until I, too, approached the light emitted from the great fire. Taught me heat the path to Amenta, the underworld where the great king sits upon his throne of might. Deep I bowed in homage before the lords of life and the lords of death, receiving as my gift the key of life. Free was I of the halls of Amenta, bound not by death to the sir of life. Far to the stars I journeyed until space and time became as naught. Then having drunk deep of the cup of wisdom, I looked into the hearts of men and they found I greater mysteries and was glad. For only in the search for truth could my soul be stilled and the flame within be quenched. Down through the ages I lived, seeing those around me taste of the cup of death and return again in the light of life. Gradually from the kingdoms of Atlantis passed waves of consciousness that had been one with me, only to be replaced by spawn of a lower star. In obedience to the law, the word of the master grew into flower. Downward into the darkness turned the thoughts of the Atlanteans, until at last in this wrath arose from his A-G-W-A-N-T-I, the dweller, speaking the word, calling the power. Deep in earth's heart, the sons of Amenta heard, and hearing, directing the changing of the flower of fire that burns eternally, changing and shifting, using the logos, until that great fire changed its direction. Over the world then broke the great waters, drowning and sinking, changing Earth's balance until only the Temple of Light was left standing on the great mountain on UNDAL still rising out of the water, so there were who were living, saved from the rush of the fountains. Called to me then the Master, saying, Gather ye together my people. Take them by the arts ye have learned of far across the waters, until ye reach the land of the hairy barbarians, dwelling in caves of the desert. Follow the plan that ye know of. Gathered I then my people and entered the great ship of the Master. Upward we rose into the morning. Dark beneath us lay the temple. Suddenly over it rose the waters. Vanished from earth until the time appointed was the great temple. Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning until beneath us lay the land of the children of Khem. Raging, they came with cudgels and spears, lifted in anger seeking to slay and utterly destroy the sons of Atlantis. Then raised I my staff and directed a ray of vibration, striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone of a mountain. Then spoke I to them in words calm and peaceful, telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying we were children of the sun and its messengers. Cowed I them by my display of magic science, until at my feet they groveled when I released them. Long dwelt we in the land of Khem, long and yet long again. Until obeying the commands of the Master, who while sleeping yet lives eternally, I sent from me the sons of Atlantis, sent them in many directions, that from the womb of time wisdom might rise again in her children. Long time dwell die in the land of Khem, doing great works by the wisdom within me. 
Upward grew into the light of knowledge the children of KHEM, watered by the reins of my wisdom. Blasted I then a path to a mentor so that I might retain my powers, living from age to age a son of Atlantis, keeping the wisdom, preserving the records. Great grew the sons of KHEM, conquering the people around them, growing slowly upwards in soul force. Now for a time I go from among them into the dark halls of Amenta, deep in the halls of the earth, before the lords of the powers, face to face once again with the dweller. Raised I high over the entrance, a doorway, a gateway leading down to Amenta. Few there would be with courage to dare it, few pass the portal to dark Amenta. Raised over the passage, I, a mighty pyramid, using the power that overcomes earth force. Deep and yet deeper place I a force house a chamber, from it carved I a circular passage reaching almost to the great summit. There in the apex, set I the crystal, sending the ray into the time space, drawing the force from out of the ether, concentrating upon the gateway to a mentor. Other chambers I built and left vacant to all seeming, yet hidden within them are the keys to a mentor. He who in courage would dare the dark realms, let him be purified first by long fasting. Lie in the sarcophagus of stone in my chamber. Then reveal I to him the great mysteries. Soon shall he follow to where I shall meet him, even in the darkness of earth shall I meet him. I, both Lord of Wisdom, meet him and hold him and dwell with him always. Builded I the great pyramid, patterned after the pyramid of earth force, burning eternally so that it, too, might remain through the ages. In it, I builded my knowledge of magic science, so that I might be here when again I return from a mentor. I, while I sleep in the halls of a mentor, my soul roaming free will incarnate dwell among men in this form or another. Emissary on earth am I of the dweller, fulfilling his commands so many might be lifted. Now return I to the halls of a mentor, leaving behind me some of my wisdom. Preserve ye and keep ye the command of the dweller, lift ever upwards your eyes toward the light. Surely in time, ye are one with the Master, surely by right ye are one with the Master, surely by right ye are one with the All. Now, I depart from ye. Know my commandments, keep them and be them, and I will be with you, helping and guiding you into the light. Now before me opens the portal. Go I down in the darkness of night. Deep in Earth's heart lie the halls of Amenta, far beneath the islands of sunken Atlantis, halls of the dead and halls of the living, bathed in the fire of the infinite all. Far in a past time, lost in space-time, the children of light look down on the world. Seeing the children of men in their bondage, bound by the force that came from beyond. Knew they that only by freedom from bondage could man ever rise from the Earth to the Sun. Down they descended and created bodies, taking the semblance of men as their own. The masters of everything said after their forming. We are they who were formed from the space dust, partaking of life from the infinite all, living in the world as children of men, like and yet unlike the children of men. Then for a dwelling place, far beneath the earth crust blasted great spaces they by their power, spaces apart from the children of men. Surrounded them by forces and power, shielded from harm they the halls of the dead. Side by side then, placed they other spaces, filled them with life and with light from above. Builded they then the halls of a mentor, that they might dwell eternally there, living with life to eternity's end. Thirty and two were there of the children, sons of lights who had come among men, seeking to free from the bondage of darkness those who were bound by the force from beyond. Deep in the halls of life grew a flower, flaming, expanding, driving backward the night. Placed in the center, a ray of great potence, life-giving, light-giving, filling with power all who came near it. Placed they around it thrones, two and thirty, places for each of the children of light, placed so that they were bathed in the radiance, filled with the life from the eternal light. Their time after time placed they their first created bodies so that they might be filled with the spirit of life. One hundred years out of each thousand must the life giving light flame forth on their bodies quickening, awakening the spirit of life. There in the surf from eon to eon, sit the great masters, living a life not known among men. There in the halls of life they lie sleeping, free flows their soul through the bodies of men. Time after time, while their bodies lie sleeping, incarnate they in the bodies of men. Teaching and guiding onward and upward, out of the darkness into the light. There in the hall of life, filled with their wisdom, known not to the races of man, living forever, neath the cold fire of life, sit the children of light. 
times there are when they awaken, come from the depths to be lights among men, infinite they among finite men. He who by progress has grown from the darkness, lifted himself from the night into light, free is he made of the halls of a mentor, free of the flower of light and of life. Guided he then, by wisdom and knowledge passes from men, to the master of life. There he may dwell as one with the masters, free from the bonds of the darkness of night. Seated within the flower of radiance sit seven lords from the space-times above us, helping and guiding through infinite wisdom, the pathway through time of the children of men. Mighty and strange, they, veiled with their power, silent, all-knowing, drawing the life force, different yet one with the children of men. I, different, and yet one with the children of light. Custodians and watchers of the force of man's bondage, ready to loose when the light has been reached. First and most mighty, sits the veiled presence, Lord of Lords, the infinite nine, over the other from each the lords of the cycles, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, each with his mission, each with his powers, guiding, directing the destiny of man. There sit they, mighty and potent, free of all time and space. Not of this world they, yet akin to it, elder brothers they, of the children of men. Judging and weighing, they with their wisdom, watching the progress of light among men. There before them was I led by the dweller, watched him blend with one from above. Then from he came forth a voice saying, Great art thou, both among children of men. Free henceforth of the halls of a mentor, master of life among children of men. Taste not of death except as thou will it, drink thou of life to eternity's end, henceforth forever is life thine for the taking. Henceforth is death at the call of thy hand. Dwell here or leave here when thou desireth, free is a mentor to the son of man. Take thou up life in what form thou desireth, child of the light that has grown among men. Choose thou thy work, for all should must labor, never be free from the pathway of light. One step thou hast gained on the long pathway upward, infinite now is the mountain of light. Each step thou taketh but heightens the mountain, all of thy progress but lengthens the goal. Approach ye ever the infinite wisdom, ever before thee recedes the goal. Free are ye made now of the halls of a mentor to walk hand in hand with the lords of the world, one in one purpose, working together, bring of light to the children of men. Then from his throne came one of the masters, taking my hand and leading me onward, through all the halls of the deep hidden land. Led he me through the halls of a mentor, showing the mysteries that are known not to man. Through the dark passage, downward he led me, into the hall where sight the dark death. Vast as space lay the great hall before me, walled by darkness but yet filled with light. Before me arose a great throne of darkness, veiled on it sat a figure of night. Darker than darkness sat the great figure, dark with the darkness not of the night. Before it then paused the master, speaking the word that brings about life, saying, O oh, master of darkness, guide of the way from life unto life, before thee I bring a son of the morning. Touch him not ever with the power of night. Call not his flame to the darkness of night. Know him and see him, one of our brothers, lifted from darkness into the light. Release thou his flame from its bondage, for he let it flame through the darkness of night. Raised then the hand of the figure, forth came a flame that grew clear and bright. Rolled back swiftly the curtain of darkness, unveiled the hall from the darkness of night. Then grew in the great space before me, flame after flame, from the veil of the night. Uncounted millions leaped they before me, some flaming forth as flowers of fire. Others there were that shared a dim radiance, flowing but faintly from out of the night. Some there were that faded swiftly, others that grew from a small spark of light. Each surrounded by its dim veil of darkness, yet flaming with light that could never be quenched. Coming and going like fireflies in springtime, filled they with space with light and with life. Then spoke a voice, mighty and solemn, saying, These are lights that are souls among men, growing and fading, existing forever, changing yet living, through death into life. When they have bloomed into flower, reached the zenith of growth in their life, swiftly then send I my veil of darkness, shrouding and changing to new forms of life. Steadily upward throughout the ages, growing, expanding into yet another flame, lighting the darkness with yet greater power, quenched yet unquenched by the veil of the night. So grows the soul of man ever upward, quenched yet unquenched by the darkness of night. I, death come, and yet I remain not, for life eternal exists in the all, only an obstacle, I in the pathway, quick to be conquered by the infinite light. 
Awaken, O flame that burns ever inward, flame forth and conquer the veil of the night. Then in the midst of the flames in the darkness grew the one that drove forth the night, flaming, expanding ever brighter until at last was nothing but light. Then spoke my guide, the voice of the master, see your own soul as it grows in the light, free now forever from the lord of the night. Forward he led me through many great spaces filled with the mysteries of the children of light, mysteries that man may never yet know of until he, too, is a son of the light. Backward then he led me into the light of the hall of the light. Knelt I then before the great masters, lords of all from the cycles above. Spoke he then with words of great power saying, Thou hast been made free of the halls of Amenta. Choose thou thy work among the children of men. Then spoke I, O oh, great master, let me be a teacher of men, leading then onward and upward until they, too, are lights among men, freed from the veil of the night that surrounds them, flaming with light that shall shine among men. Spoke to me then the voice, go as yet will. So be it decreed. Master ye of your destiny, free to take her rejected will. Take ye the power, take ye the wisdom. Shine as a light among the children of men. Upward then, let me the dweller. Dwelt I again among children of men, teaching and showing some of my wisdom, son of the light, a fire among men. Now again I tread the path downward, seeking the light in the darkness of night. Hold ye and keep ye, preserve my record, guide shall it be to the children of men. List ye, O man, to the voice of wisdom, list to the voice of Thoth the Atlantean. Freely I give to thee of my wisdom, gathered from the time and space of this cycle, master of mysteries, son of the morning, living forever, a child of the light, shining with brightness, star of the morning, Toth the teacher of men is of all. Long time ago I in my childhood lay neath the stars on long buried Atlantis, dreaming of mysteries far above men. Then in my heart grew there a great longing to conquer the pathway that led to the stars. Year after year I sought after wisdom, seeking new knowledge following the way, until at last my soul, in great travail, broke from its bondage and bounded away. Free was I from the bondage of earth men. Free from the body, I flashed through the night. Unlocked at last for me was the star space. Free was I from the bondage of night. Now to the end of space sought I wisdom, far beyond knowledge of finite man, Far into space, my soul traveled freely into infinity's sir of light. Strange, beyond knowledge were some of the planets, great and gigantic beyond dreams of men. Yet found our law in all of its beauty, working through and among them as here among men. Flashed forth my soul through infinity's beauty, far through space I flew with my thoughts. Rested I there on a planet of beauty. Strains of harmony filled all the air. Shapes that were moving in order, great and majestic as stars in the night, mounting in harmony, ordered equilibrium, symbols of the cosmic, like unto law. Many the stars I passed in my journey, many the races of men on their worlds, some reaching highest stars of the morning, some falling low in the blackness of night. Each and all of them struggling upward, gaining the heights and plumbing the depths, moving at times in realms of brightness, living through darkness, gaining the light. Know, O oh man, that light is thine heritage. Know that darkness is only a veil. Sealed in thine heart is brightness eternal, waiting the moment of freedom to conquer, waiting to rend the veil of the night. Some I found who had conquered the ether. Free of space were they while yet they were men. Using the force that is the foundation of all things, far in space constructed they a planet, drawn by the force that flows through the all, condensing, coalescing the ether into forms that grew as they willed. Outstripping in science they, all of the races, mighty in wisdom, sons of the stars. Long time I paused, watching their wisdom. Saw them create from out of the ether cities gigantic of rose and gold. Formed forth from the primal element base of all matter, the ether far flung. Far in the past, they had conquered the ether, freed themselves from the bondage of toil, formed in their mind only a picture and swiftly created, it grew. Forth then, my soul sped throughout the cosmos, seeing ever new things and old, learning that man is truly space-born, a son of the sun, a child of the stars. Know ye, O man, whatever from ye inhabit, surely it is one with the stars. Thy bodies are nothing but planets revolving around their central suns. 
When ye have gained the light of all wisdom, free shall ye be to shine in the ether, one of the suns that light out of darkness, one of the space born grown into light. Just as the stars in time lose their brilliance, light passing from them into the great source, so, O oh man, the soul passes onward, leaving behind the darkness of night. Formed forth ye, from the primal ether, filled with the brilliance that flows from the source, bound by the ether coalesced around, jet ever it flames until at last it is free. Lift up your flame from out of the darkness, fly from the night and ye shall be free. Travel I through the space-time, knowing my soul at last was set free, knowing that now might I pursue wisdom. Until at last, I passed to a plane, hidden from knowledge, known not to wisdom, extension beyond all that we know. Now, O oh man, when I had this knowing, happy my soul grew, for now I was free. Listen, ye space-born, list to my wisdom, know ye not that ye, too, will be free. List ye again, O oh man, to my wisdom, that hearing, ye too, might live and be free. Not of the earthy ye, earthy, but child of the infinite cosmic light. Know ye not, O oh man, of your heritage? Know ye not ye truly the light? Son of the great sun, when ye gain wisdom, truly aware of your kinship with light. Now, to ye, I give knowledge, freedom to walk in the path I have trod, showing me truly how by my striving, I trod the path that leads to the stars. Hark ye, O oh man, and know of thy bondage, know how to free thyself from the toils. Out of the darkness shall ye rise upward, one with the light and one with the stars. Follow ye ever the path of wisdom. Only by this can ye rise from below. Ever man's destiny leads him onward into the curves of infinity's all. Know ye, O oh man, that all space is ordered. Only by order are ye one with the all. Order and balance are the law of the cosmos. Follow and ye shall be one with the all. He who would follow the pathway of wisdom, open must be he to the flower of life, extending his consciousness out of the darkness, flowing through time and space in the all. Deep in the silence, first ye must linger until at last ye are free from desire, free from the longing to speak in the silence. Conquer by silence, the bondage of words. Abstaining from eating until we have conquered desire for food, that is bondage of soul. Then lie ye down in the darkness. Close ye your eyes from the rays of the light. Center thy soul force in the place of thine consciousness, shaking it free from the bonds of the night. Place in thy mind place the image thou desireth. Picture the place thou desireth to see. Vibrate back and forth with thy power. Loosen the soul from out of its night. Fiercely must thou shake with all of thy power until at last thy soul shall be free. Mighty beyond words is the flame of the cosmic, hanging in planes, unknown to man, mighty and balanced, moving in order, music of harmonies, far beyond man. Speaking with music, singing with color, flame from the beginning of eternity's all. Spark of the flame art thou, O oh my children, burning with color and living with music. List to the voice and thou shalt be free. Consciousness free is fused with the cosmic, one with the order and law of the all. Knew ye not man, that out of the darkness, light shall flame forth, a symbol of all. Pray ye this prayer for attaining of wisdom. Pray for the coming of light to the all. Mighty spirit of light that shines through the cosmos, draw my flame closer in harmony to thee. Lift up my fire from out of the darkness, magnet of fire that is one with the all. Lift up my soul, thou mighty and potent. Child of the light, turn not away. Draw me in power to melt in thy furnace, one with all things and all things in one, fire of the life strain and one with the brain. When ye have freed thy soul from its bondage, know that for ye the darkness is gone. Ever through space ye may seek wisdom, bound not be fetters forged in the flesh. Onward and upward into the morning, free flash, O soul, to the realms of light. Move thou in order, move thou in harmony, freely shalt move with the children of light. Seek ye and know ye, my key of wisdom. Thus, O oh man, ye shall surely be free. Oft dream I of buried Atlantis, lost in the ages that have passed into night. Eon on eon thou existed in beauty, a light shining through the darkness of night. Mighty in power, ruling the earthborn, lord of the earth in Atlantis day. King of the nations, master of wisdom, light through S-U-N-T-A-L, keeper of the Y, dwelt in his temple, the master of U-N-A-L, light of the earth in Atlantis day. 
Master, heat from the cycle beyond us, living in bodies as one among men. Not as the earthborn, he from beyond us, son of a cycle, advanced beyond men. Know ye, O man, that H-O-R-L-E-T the master, was never one with the children of men. Far in the past time when Atlantis first grew as a power, appeared the one with the key of wisdom, showing the way of light to all. Showed he to all men the path of attainment, way of the light that flows among men. Mastering darkness, leading the man soul upward to heights that were one with the light. Divided the kingdoms, the intersections. Ten were they ruled by children of men. Upon another built he a temple, built but not by the children of men. Out of the ether called he its substance, molded and formed by the power of Y-T-O-L-A-N into the forms he built with his mind. Mile upon mile it covered the island, space upon space it grew in its might. Black, jet not black, but dark like the space-time, deep in its heart the essence of light. Swiftly the temple grew into being, molded and shaped by the word of the dweller, called from the formless into a form. Builded he then, within it, great chambers, filled them with forms called forth from the ether, filled them with wisdom called forth by his mind. Formless was he within his temple, yet was he formed in the image of men. Dwelling among them yet not of them, strange and far different was he from the children of men. Chose he then from among the people, three who became his gateway. Choose he the three from the highest to become his links with Atlantis. Messengers they, who carried his counsel, to the kings of the children of men. Brought he forth others and taught them wisdom, teachers, they, to the children of men. Placed he them on the island of UNDAL to stand as teachers of light to men. Each of those who were thus chosen, taught must he be for years five and ten. Only thus could he have understanding to bring light to the children of men. Thus there came into being the temple, a dwelling place for the master of men. I, both, have ever sought wisdom, searching in darkness and searching in light. Long in my youth I travelled the pathway, seeking ever new knowledge to gain. Until after much striving, one of the three, to me brought the light. Brought he to me the commands of the dweller, called me from the darkness into the light. Brought he me, before the dweller, deep in the temple before the great fire. There on the great throne, beheld I, the dweller, clothed with the light and flashing with fire. Down I knelt before that great wisdom, feeling the light flowing through me in waves. Heard I then the voice of the dweller, O darkness, come into the light. Long have ye sought the pathway to light. Each soul on earth that loosens its fetters, shall soon be made free from the bondage of night. Forth from the darkness have ye risen, closer approached the light of your goal. Here ye shall dwell as one of my children, keeper of records gathered by wisdom, instrument thou of the light from beyond. Ready by thou may to do what is needed, preserver of wisdom through the ages of darkness, that shall come fast on the children of men. Live thee here and drink of all wisdom. Secrets and mysteries unto thee shall unveil. Then answered I, the master of cycles, saying, O light, that descended to men, give thou to me of thy wisdom that I might be a teacher of men. Give thou of thy light that I may be free. Spoke then to me again, the master, age after age shall ye live through your wisdom, I, when o'er Atlantis the ocean waves roll, holding the light, though hidden in darkness, ready to come whene'er thou shalt call. Go thee now and learn greater wisdom. Grow thou through light to infinities all. Long then dwell die in the temple of the dweller until at last I was one with the light. Followed I then the path to the star plains, followed I then the pathway to light. Deep into earth's heart I followed the pathway, learning the secrets, below as above, learning the pathway to the halls of AME and TI, learning the law that balances the world. To earth's hidden chambers pierced I by my wisdom, deep through the earth's crust, into the pathway, hidden for ages from the children of men. Unveiled before me, ever more wisdom until I reached a new knowledge, found that all is part of an all, great and yet greater than all that we know. Searched high infinity's heart through all the ages. Deep and yet deeper, more mysteries I found. Now, as I look back through the ages, know I that wisdom is boundless, ever grown greater throughout the ages, one with infinities greater than all. Light there was in ancient Atlantis, yet darkness, too, was hidden in all. Fell from the light into the darkness, some who had risen to heights among men. Proud they became because of their knowledge, proud were they of their place among men. 
deep delved they into the forbidden, opened the gateway that led to below. Sought they to gain ever more knowledge but seeking to bring it up from below. He who descends below must have balance, else he is bound by lack of our light. Opened, they then, by their knowledge pathways forbidden to man. But, in his temple all seeing, the dweller, lay in his A-G-W-A-N-T-I, while through Atlantis, his soul roamed free. Saw he the Atlanteans, by their magic, opening the gateway that would bring to earth a great woe. Fast fled his soul then, back to his body. Up he arose from his A-G-W-A-N-T-I. Called he the three mighty messengers. Gave the commands that shattered the world. Deep beneath earth's crust to the halls of A-M-E and T-I, swiftly descended the dweller. Called he then on the powers the seven lords wielded, changed the earth's balance. Down sank Atlantis beneath the dark waves. Shattered the gateway that had been opened, shattered the doorway that led down below. All of the islands were shattered except UNAL, and part of the island of the sons of the dweller. Preserved he them to be the teachers, lights on the path for those to come after, lights for the lesser children of men. Called he then, I thoth before him, gave me commands for all I should do, saying, Take thou oath oath all of your wisdom. Take all your records, take all your magic. Go thou forth as a teacher of men. Go thou forth reserving the records until in time light grows among men. Light shalt thou be all through the ages, hidden yet found by enlightened men. Over all earth, give we ye power, free thou to give or take it away. Gather thou now the sons of Atlantis. Take them and flee to the people of the rock caves. Fly to the land of the children of Khem. Then gathered I the sons of Atlantis. Into the spaceship I brought all my records, brought the records of sunken Atlantis. Gathered I all of my powers, instruments many of mighty magic. Up then we rose on wings of the morning. High we arose above the temple, leaving behind the three and dweller, deep in the halls neath the temple, closing the pathway to the lords of the cycles. Yet ever to him who has knowing open shall be the path to A.M.E. and T.I. Fast fled we then on the wings of the morning, fled to the land of the children of K.H.E.M. There by my power, I conquered and ruled them. Raised I to light, the children of K-H-E-M. Deep beneath the rocks, I buried my spaceship, waiting the time when man might be free. Over the spaceship, erected a marker in the form of a lion yet likened to man. There, neath the image rests yet my spaceship, forth to be brought when need shall arise. Know ye, O man, that far in the future, invaders shall come from out of the deep. Then awake ye who have wisdom. Bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. Deep beneath the image lies my secret. Search and find in the pyramid I built. Each to the other is the keystone, each the gateway that leads into life. Follow the key I leave behind me. Seek and the doorway to life shall be thine. Seek thou in my pyramid, deep in the passage called ends in a wall. Use thou the key of the seven, and open to thee the pathway will fall. Now unto thee I have given my wisdom. Now unto thee I have given my way. Follow the pathway. Solve thou my secrets. Unto thee I have shown the way. Hark ye, O man, to the wisdom of magic. Hark the knowledge of powers forgotten. Long ago in the days of the first man, warfare began between darkness and light. Men then as now, were filled with both darkness and light, and while in some darkness held sway, in other light filled the soul. I age old in this warfare, the eternal struggle between darkness and light. Fiercely is it fought all through the ages, using strange powers hidden to man. Adepts has there been filled with the blackness, struggling always against the light, but others there are who, filled with brightness, have ever conquered the darkness of night. Where'er ye may be in all ages and plain, surely ye shall know of the battle with night. Long ages ago, the sons of the morning descending, found the world filled with night, there in that past began the struggle, the age-old battle, darkness and light. Many in the time were so filled with darkness that only feebly flamed the light from the night. Some they were, masters of darkness, who sought to fill all with their darkness, sought to draw others into their night. Fiercely withstood they, the masters of brightness, fiercely fought they from the darkness of night sought ever to tighten the fetters, the chains that bind men to the darkness of night. Used they always the dark magic brought into men by the power of darkness. 
magic that enshrouded man's soul with darkness. Banded together as in order, brothers of darkness, they through the ages, antagonist they to the children of men. Walked they always secret and hidden, found, yet not found by the children of men. Forever, they walked and worked in darkness, hiding from the light in the darkness of night. Silently, secretly use they their power, enslaving and binding the soul of men. Unseen they come, and unseen they go. Man, in his ignorance, calls them from below. Dark is the way of the dark brothers travel, dark of the darkness, not of the night, traveling aware of they walk through man's dreams. Power they have gained from the darkness around them to call other dwellers from out of their plane, in ways that are dark and unseen by man. Into man's mind space reach the dark brothers. Around it, they close the veil of their night. They're through its lifetime that soul dwells in bondage, bound by the fetters of the veil of the night. Mighty are they in the forbidden knowledge forbidden because it is one with the night. Hark ye, O old man, and list to my warning, be ye free from the bondage of night. Surrender not your soul to the brothers of darkness. Keep thy face ever turned towards the light. Know ye not, O man, that your sorrow only has come through the veil of the night. I man, heed ye my warning, strive ever upward, turn your soul toward the light. The brothers of darkness seek for their brothers those who traveled the pathway of light. For well know they that those who have traveled far towards the sun in their pathway of light have great and yet greater power to bind with darkness the children of light. List ye, O man, to he who comes to you. But weigh in the balance if his words be of light. For many there are who walk in dark brightness and yet are not the children of light. Easy it is to follow their pathway, easy to follow the path that they lead. But yet, O oh man, heed ye my warning, light comes only to him who strives. Hard is the pathway that leads to the wisdom, hard is the pathway that leads to the light. Many shall ye find the stones in your pathway, many the mountains to climb toward the light. Yet know ye, O oh man, to him that overcometh, free will he be of the pathway of light. For ye know, O oh man, in the end light must conquer and darkness and night be banished from light. Listen, O oh man, and heed ye this wisdom, even as darkness, so is the light. When darkness is banished and all veils are rendered, out the shall flash from the darkness, the light. Even as exist among men the dark brothers, so there exists the brothers of light. Antagonists say of the brothers of darkness, seeking to free men from the night. Powers have they, mighty and potent, knowing the law, the planets obey. Work they ever in harmony and order, freeing the man's soul from its bondage of night. Secret and hidden, walk they also. No, not are they to the children of men. Ever have they fought the dark brothers, conquered and conquering time without end. Yet always light shall in the end be master, driving away the darkness of night. I, man, know ye this knowing, always beside thee walk the children of light. Masters they of the sun power ever unseen yet the guardians of men. Open to all is their pathway, open to he who will walk in the light. Free are they of dark ame and ti, free of the halls where life reigns supreme. Sons are they and lords of the morning, children of light to shine among men. Like man are they and yet are unlike, never divided were they in the past. One have they been in oneness eternal, throughout all space since the beginning of time. Up did they come in oneness with the All One, up from the first space, formed and unformed. Given to man have they secrets that shall guard and protect him from all harm. He who would travel the path of the Master, free must he be from the bondage of night. Conquer must he the formless and shapeless, conquer must he the phantom of fear. Knowing, must he gain of all of the secrets, travel the pathway that leads through the darkness, yet ever before him keep the light of his goal. Obstacles great shall he meet in the pathway, yet press on to the light of the sun. Hear ye, O man, the sun is the symbol of the light that shines at the end of thy road. Now to thee give I the secrets, now to meet the dark power, meet and conquer the fear from the night. Only by knowing can ye conquer, only be knowing can ye have light. Now I give unto thee the knowledge, known to the masters, the knowing that conquers all the dark fears. Use this the wisdom I give thee. Master thou shalt be of the brothers of night. When unto thee comes a feeling, drawing thee nearer to the darker gate, examine thine heart and find if the feeling thou hast has come from within. If thou shalt find the darkness thine own thoughts, banish them forth from the place in thy mind. 
sent through thy body a wave of vibration, irregular first and regular second, repeating time after time until free. Start the wave force in thy brain center. Direct it in waves from thine head to thy foot. But if thou findest thine heart is not darkened, be sure that a force is directed to thee. Only by knowing can thou overcome it. Only be wisdom can thou hope to be free. Knowledge brings wisdom and wisdom is power. Attain and ye shall have power o'er all. Seek ye first a place bound by darkness. Place ye a sir around about thee. Stand erect in the midst of the sir. Use thou this formula and you shall to be free. Raise thou thine hands to the dark space above thee. Close thou thine eyes and draw in the light. Call to the spirit of light through the space-time, using these words and thou shalt be free, fill thou my body, O spirit of life, fill thou my body with spirit of light. Come from the flood that shines through the darkness. Come from the halls where the seven lords rule. Name them by name, I, the seven, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine. By their names I call them to aid me, free me and save me from the darkness of night, U-N-T-A-N-A-S, Q-U-E-R-T-A-S. C-H-I-E-T-A-L and G-O-Y-A-N-A-H-U-E-R-T-A-L S-E-M-V-E-T-A-R-D-A-L By the names I implore thee, free me from darkness and fill me with light know ye, O man, that when ye have done this, ye shall be free from the fetters that bind ye, cast off the bondage of the brothers of night. See ye not that the names have the power to free by vibration the fetters that bind? Use them at need to free thou thine brother so that he, too, may come forth from the night. Thou, O man, art thy brother's helper. Let him not lie in the bondage of night. Now unto thee, give I my magic. Take it and dwell on the pathway of light. Light unto thee, life unto thee, sun, may thou be on the cycle above. Hark ye, O man, and list to my voice. Open thy mind space and drink of my wisdom. Dark is the pathway of life that ye travel. Many the pitfalls that lie in thy way. Seek ye ever to gain greater wisdom. Attain and it shall be light on thy way. Open thy soul, O man, to the cosmic and let it flow in as one with thy soul. Light is eternal and darkness is fleeting. Seek ye ever, O man, for the light. Know ye that ever as light fills thy being, darkness for thee shall soon disappear. Open thy souls to the brothers of brightness. Let them enter and fill thee with light. Lift up thine eyes to the light of the cosmos. Keep thou ever thy face to the goal. Only by gaining the light of all wisdom, art thou one with the infinite goal. Seek ye ever the oneness eternal. Seek ever the light into one. Hear ye, O man, list to my voice singing the song of light and of life. Throughout all space, light is prevalent, encompassing all with its banners at flames. Seek ye forever in the veil of the darkness, somewhere ye shall surely find light. Hidden and buried, lost a man's knowledge, deep in the finite the infinite exists. Lost but existing, flowing through all things, living in all as the infinite brain. In all space, there is only one wisdom. Through seeming decided, it is one in the one. All that exists comes forth from the light, and the light comes forth from the all. Everything created is based upon order, law rules the space where the infinite dwells. Forth from equilibrium came the great cycles, moving in harmony toward infinity's end. Know ye, O man, that far in the space-time, infinity itself shall pass into change. Hear ye and list to the voice of wisdom, know that all is of all evermore. Know that through time thou may pursue wisdom and find ever more light on the way. Know that through time thou may pursue wisdom and find ever more light on the way. I, thou shalt find that ever receding, thy goal shall elude thee from day unto day. Long time ago, in the halls of A-M-E-N-T-I, I, both stood before the lords of the cycles. Mighty, they in their aspects of power, mighty, they in the wisdom unveiled. Led by the dweller, first did I see them. But afterwards free was I of their presence, free to enter their conclave at will. Oft did I journey down the dark pathway unto the hall where the light ever glows. Learned I of the masters of cycles, wisdom brought from the cycles above. Manifest they in this cycle as guides that matter the knowledge of all. Seven are they, mighty in power, speaking these words through me to men. Time after time, stood I before them listening to words that came not with sound. 
once said they unto me, O man, wouldst thou gain wisdom? Seek for it in the heart of the flame. Wouldst thou gain knowledge of power? Seek ye it in the heart of the flame. Wouldst be one with the heart of the flame? Seek then within thine own hidden flame. Many the times spoke they to me, teaching me wisdom not of the world, showing me ever new paths to brightness, teaching me wisdom brought from above. Giving knowledge of operation, learning of law, the order of all. Spoke to me again, the seven, saying, From far beyond time are we, come, O man, traveled we from beyond space-time, I, from the place of infinity's end. When ye and all of thy brethren were formless, formed forth were we from the order of all. Not as men are we, though once we, too, were as men. Out of the great void were we formed forth in order by law. For know ye that which is formed truly is formless, having form only to thine eyes. And again, unto me spoke the seven, saying, Child of the light, oath, oath, art thou free to travel the bright path upward until at last all ones become one fourth were we formed after our order, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Know ye that these are the numbers of cycles that we descend from unto man. Each having here a duty to fulfill, each having here a force to control. Yet are we one with the soul of our cycle. Yet are we, too, seeking a goal. Far beyond man's conception, infinity extends into a greater than all. There, in a time that is yet not a time, we shall all become one with a greater than all. Time and space are moving in circles. Know ye the law, and ye too, shall be free. I, free shall ye be to move through the cycles past the guardians that dwell at the door. Then to me spoke he of nine, saying, Eons and eons have I existed, knowing not life and tasting not death. But know ye, O man, that far in the future, life and death shall be one with the all. Each so perfected by balancing the other that neither exists in the oneness of all. In men of this cycle, the life force is rampant, but life in its growth becomes one with them all. Here, I manifest in this your cycle, but yet am I there in your future of time. Yet to me, time exists not, for in my world time exists not, the formless are we. Life have we not but yet have existence, fuller and greater and freer than thee. Man is a flame bound to a mountain, but we in our cycle shall ever be free. Know ye, O man, that when ye have progressed into the cycle that lengthen above, life itself will pass to the darkness and only the essence of soul shall remain. Then to me spoke the Lord of the Eight, saying, All that ye know is but part of little. Not as yet have ye touched on the great. Far out in space where light being supreme, came I into the light. Formed was I also but not as ye are. Body of light was my formless form formed. Know I not life and know I not death, yet master am I of all that exists. Seek ye to find the path through the barriers. Travel the road that leads to the light. Spoke again to me the nine saying, seek ye to find the path to beyond. Not impossible is it to grow to a consciousness above. For when two have become one and one has become the all, know ye the barrier has lifted, and ye are made free of the road. Grow thou from form to the formless. Free may thou be of the road. Thus, through ages I listened, learning the way to the all. Now lift I my thoughts to the all thing. List ye and hear when it calls. O light, all pervading, one with all and all with one, flow thou to me through the channel. Enter thou so that I may be free. Make me one with the all soul, shining from the blackness of night. Free let me be of all space-time, free from the veil of the night. I, a child of light, command, free from the darkness to be. Formless am I to the light soul, formless yet shining with light. No, I the bonds of the darkness must shatter and fall before light. Now give I this wisdom. Free may ye be, O man, living in light and in brightness. Turn not thy face from the light. Thy soul dwells in realms of brightness. Ye are a child of the light. Turn thy thoughts inward, not outward. Find thou the light soul within. Know that thou art the master. All else is brought from within. Grow thou to realms of brightness. Hold thou thy thought on the light. Know thou art one with the cosmos, a flame and a child of the light. Now to thee gave I warning, let not the thought turn away. Know that the brightness flows through thy body, for I turn not to the dark brothers that come from the brothers of black.
but keep thine eyes ever lifted, thy soul in tune with the light. Take ye this wisdom and heed it. List to my voice and obey. Follow the pathway to brightness, and thou shalt be one with the way. Unto thee, O man, have I given my knowledge. Unto thee have I given of light. Hear ye now and receive my wisdom brought from space planes above and beyond. Not as man am I for free have I become of dimensions and planes. In each take I on a new body. In each I change in my form. Know I now that the formless is all there is of form. Great is the wisdom of the seven. Mighty are they from beyond. Manifest they through their power, filled by force from beyond. Hear ye these words of wisdom. Hear ye and make them thine own. Find in them the formless. Mystery is but hidden knowledge. No one ye shall unveil. Find the deep buried wisdom and be master of darkness and light. Deep are the mysteries around thee, hidden the secrets of old. Search through the keys of my wisdom. Surely shall ye find the way. The gateway to power is secret, but he who attains shall receive. Look to the light, O my brother. Open and ye shall receive. Press on through the valley of darkness. Overcome the dweller of night. Keep ever thine eyes of the light plane. And thou shalt be one with the light. Man is in process of changing to forms that are not of this world. Grows he as time to the formless, a plane on the cycle above. Know ye, ye must become formless before ye with the light, list ye, O man, to my voice, telling of pathways to light, showing the way of attainment when ye shall be one with the light. Search ye the mysteries of earth's heart. Learn of the law that exists, holding the stars in their balance by the force of the primordial mist. Seek ye the flame of the earth's life. Bathe in the glare of its flame. Follow the three-cornered pathway until thou too art a flame. Speak thou in words without voice to those who dwell down below. Enter the blue litten temple and bathe in the fire of all life. No, O oh man, thou art complex, a being of earth and of fire. Let thy flame shine out brightly. Be thou only the fire. Wisdom is hidden in darkness. When lit by the flame of the soul, find thou the wisdom and be light born, a son of the light without form. Seek thee evermore wisdom. Find it in the heart of the flame. Know that only by striving and light pour into thy brain. Now have I spoken with wisdom. List to my voice and obey. Tear open the veils of the darkness. Shine a light on the way. Speak I of ancient Atlantis, speak of the days of the kingdom of shadows, speak of the coming of the children of shadows. Out of the great deep were they called by the wisdom of earthmen, called for the purpose of gaining great power. Far in the past before Atlantis existed, men there were who delved into darkness, using dark magic, calling up beings from the great deep below us. Forth came they into this cycle. Formless were they of another vibration, existing unseen by the children of Earth men. Only through blood could they have formed being. Only through man could they live in the world. In ages past were they conquered by masters, driven below to the place whence they came. But some there were who remained hidden in spaces and plains unknown to man. Lived they in Atlantis as shadows, but at times they appeared among men. I, when the blood was offered, for there came they to dwell among men. In the form of man they amongst us, but only to sight were they as a men. Serpent headed when the glamour was lifted but appearing to man as men among men. Crept they into the councils, taking forms that were like unto men. Slaying by their arts the chiefs of the kingdoms, taking their form and ruling over man. Only by magic could they be discovered. Only by sound could their faces be seen. Sought they from the kingdom of shadows to destroy man and rule in his place. But, know ye, the masters were mighty in magic, able to lift the veil from the face of the serpent, able to send him back to his place. Came they to man and taught him the secret, the word that only a man can pronounce. Swift then they lifted the veil from the serpent and cast him forth from the place among men. Yet beware, the serpent still liveth in a place that is open at times to the world. Unseen they walk among me in places where the rites have been said. Again as time passes onward shall they take the semblance of men. Called may they be by the master who knows the white or the black, but only the white master may control and bind them while in the flesh. 
seek not the kingdom of shadows, for evil will surely appear. For only the master of brightness shall conquer the shadow of fear. Know ye, O oh my brother, that fear is an obstacle great. Be master of all in the brightness, the shadow will soon disappear. Hear ye and heed my wisdom, the voice of light is clear. Seek not the valley of shadow, and light will only appear. List ye, O oh man, to the depth of my wisdom. Speak I of knowledge hidden from man. Far have I been on my journey through space-time, even to the end of space of this cycle. I glimpsed the hounds of the barrier, lying in wait for he who would pass them. In that space where time exists not faintly I sensed the guardians of cycles. Move they only through angles. Free are they not of the curved dimensions. Strange and terrible are the hounds of the barrier. Follow their consciousness to the limits of space. Think not to escape by entering your body, for follow they fast the soul through angles. Only the sir will give you protection, save from the claws of the dwellers in angles. Once, in a time past, I approached the great barrier, and saw on the shores where time exists not the formless forms of the hounds of the barrier. I, hiding in the midst beyond time I found them, and they, scenting me afar off, raised themselves and gave the great bell cry that could be heard from cycle to cycle and moved through space toward my soul. Fled I then fast before them, back from time's unthinkable end. But ever after me pursued they, moving in strange angles not known to man. I, on the grey shores of time spaces and found I the hounds of the barrier, ravening for the soul who attempts the beyond. Fled I through circles back to my body. Fled, and fast after me they followed. I, after me the devourers followed, seeking through angles to devour my soul. I, know ye man, that the soul who dares the barrier may be held in bondage by the hounds from beyond time, held till this cycle is completed and left behind when the consciousness leaves. Entered I my body created the circles that know not angles, created the form that from my form was formed, made my body into a sir and lost the pursuers in the circles of time. But, even yet when free from my body, cautious ever must I be not to move through angles, else my soul may never be free. Know ye, the hounds of the barrier move only through angles and never through curves of space. Only by moving through curves can ye escape them, for in angles they will pursue thee. O oh man, heed ye my warning, seek not to break open the gate to beyond. Few there are who have succeeded in passing the barrier to the greater light that shines beyond. For know ye, ever the dwellers, seek such souls to hold in their thrall. Listen, O oh man, and heed ye my warning, seek ye to move not in angles but curves, and if while free from thy body, though hearest the sound like the bay of a hound ringing clear and bell like through thy being, flee back to thy body through circles, penetrate not the midst mist before. When thou hast entered the form thou hast dwelt in, use thou the cross and the sir combined. Open thy mouth and use thou thy voice. Utter the word and thou shalt be free. Only the one who of light has the fullest can hope to pass by the guards of the way, and then must he move through strange curves and angles that are formed in direction not known to man. List ye, O man, and heed ye my warning, attempt not to pass the guards on the way. Rather should ye seek to gain of thine own light and make thyself ready to pass on the way. Light is thine ultimate end, O my brother. Seek and find ever the light on the way. List ye, O man, hear ye my voice, teaching of wisdom and light in this cycle, teaching ye how to banish the darkness, teaching ye how to bring light in thy life. Seek ye, O man, to find the great pathway that leads to eternal life as a sun. Draw ye away from the veil of the darkness. Seek to become a light in the world. Make of thyself a vessel for light, a focus for the sun of this space. Lift thou thine eyes to the cosmos. Lift thou thine eyes to the light. Speak in the words of the dweller, the chant that calls down the light. Sing thou the song of freedom. Sing thou the song of the soul. Create the high vibration that will make thee one with the whole. Blend all thyself with the cosmos. Grow into one with the light. Be thou a channel of order, a pathway of law to the world. Thy light, O oh man, is the great light shining through the shadow of flesh. Free must thou rise from the darkness before thou art one with the light. Shadows of darkness surround thee. Life fills thee with its flow. But no, O oh man, thou must arise and forth thy body go far to the plains that surround thee and yet are one with thee too. 
look all around thee, O oh man. See thine own light reflected. I even in the darkness around thee, thine own light pours forth through the veil. Seek thou for wisdom always. Let not thine body betray. Keep in the path of the light wave. Shun thou the darkened way. Know thee that wisdom is lasting. Existing since the all soul began, creating harmony from by the law that exists in the way. List ye, O man, to the teachings of wisdom. List to the voice that speaks of the past time. I, I shall tell thee knowledge forgotten, tell ye of wisdom hidden in past time, lost in the midst of darkness around me. Know ye, man, ye are the ultimate of all things. Only the knowledge of this is forgotten, lost when man was cast into bondage, bound and fettered by the chains of the darkness. Long, long ago I cast off my body. Wandered I free through the vastness of ether, circled the angles that hold man in bondage. Know ye, O oh man, ye are only a spirit. The body is nothing. The soul is all. Let not your body be a fetter. Cast off the darkness and travel in light. Cast off your body, O oh man, and be free, truly a light that is one with the light. When ye are free from the fetters of darkness and travel in space as the sun of the light, then ye shall know that space is not boundless but truly bounded by angles and curves. Know ye, O oh man, that all that exists is only an aspect of greater things yet to come. Matter is fluid and flows like a stream, constantly changing from one thing to another. All through the ages has knowledge existed, never been changed though buried in darkness, never been lost though forgotten by man. Know ye that throughout the space that ye dwell in are others as great as your own, interlaced through the heart of your matter yet separate in space of their own. Once in a time long forgotten, I both opened the doorway, penetrated into other spaces and learned of the secrets concealed. Deep in the essence of matter are many mysteries concealed. Nine are the interlocked dimensions, and nine are the cycles of space. Nine are the diffusions of consciousness, and nine are the worlds within worlds. I, nine are the lords of the cycles that come from above and below. Space is filled with concealed ones, for space is divided by time. Seek ye the key to the time-space, and ye shall unlock the gate. Know ye that throughout the time-space consciousness surely exist. Though from our knowledge it is hidden, yet still forever exists. The key to worlds within thee are found only within. For man is the gateway of mystery and the key that is one with the one. Seek ye within the sir. Use the word I shall give. Open the gateway within thee, and surely thou, too, shall live. Man, ye think that ye liveth, but know it is life within death. For as sure as ye are bound to your body, for you know life exists. Only the soul is space-free, has life that is really a life. All else is only a bondage, a fetter from which to be free. Think not that man is earthborn, though come from the earth he may be. Man is light-born spirit. But, without knowing, he can never be free. Darkness surrounds the light-born. Darkness fetters the soul. Only the one who is seeking may ever hope to be free. Shadows around thee a falling darkness fills all the space shine forth, O light of the man's soul. Fill thou the darkness of space. Ye son of the great light remember and ye shall be free. Stay not thou in the shadows. Spring forth from the darkness of night light, let thy soul be, O sun born, fill with glory of light, freed from the bonds of the darkness, a soul that is one with the light. Thou art the key to all wisdom. Within thee is all time and space. Live not in bondage to darkness. Free thou thy light form from night. Great light that fills all the cosmos, flow thou fully to man. Make of his body a light torch that shall never be quenched among men. Long in the past sought I wisdom, knowledge not known to man. Far to the past I travelled into the space where time began. Sought I ever new knowledge to add to the wisdom I knew. Yet only I found did the future hold the key to the wisdom I thought down to the holes of ame and ti i journeyed the greater knowledge to seek ask of thee lords of the cycles they way to the wisdom i sought ask the lords this question where is the source of all i answered in tones that were mighty the voice of the lord of the nine free thou thy soul from thy body and come forth with me to the light forth i came from my body are a glittering flame in the night stood i before the lord bathed in the fire of life Seized was I then by a force, great beyond knowledge of man. 
cast was I to the abyss through spaces unknown to man. Saw I the mouldings of order from the chaos and angles of night. Saw I the light spring from order and heard the voice of the light. Saw I the flame of the abyss casting forth order and light. Saw order spring out of chaos. Saw light giving forth life. Then heard I the voice. Hear thou and understand. The flame is the source of all things, containing all things in potentiality. The order that sent forth light is the word and from the word come life and the existence of all. And again spoke the voice saying, the life in thee is the word. Find thou the life within thee and have powers to use of the word. Long I watched the light flame pouring forth from the essence of fire, realizing that life but order and that man is one with the fire. Back I came to my body stood again with the nine, listened to the voice of the cycles, vibrate with powers they spoke, know ye, oath oath but life is but the word of the fire. The life forth ye seek before thee is but the word in the world is a fire. Seek ye the path to the word and powers shall surely be thine. Then asked I of the nine, O Lord, show me the path. Give the path to the wisdom. Show me the way to the word. Answered me then, the Lord of the Nine, through order, ye shall find the way. Saw ye that the word came from chaos. Saw ye not that light came from fire. Look in thy life for this order. Balance and order thy life. Quell all the chaos of the emotions and thou shalt have order in life. Order brought forth from chaos will bring thee the word of the source, will thee the power of cycles, and make of thy soul a force that free will extend through the ages, a perfect sun from the source. Listen thou to the voice and deep thank the words in my heart. Forever have I sought for order that I might draw on the word. Know ye that he who attains it must ever in order be for use of the word though this order has never and can never be. Take ye these words, O oh man. As part of thy life, let them be. Seek thee to conquer this order and one with the word thou shalt be. Put forth thy effort in gaining light on the pathway of life. Seek to be one with the sun, state. Seek to be solely the light. Hold thou thy thought on the oneness of light with the body of man. Know that all is order from chaos born into light. List ye, O man. Take of my wisdom. Learn of his deep hidden mysteries of space. Learn of the thought that grew in the abyss bringing order and harmony in space. Know ye, O man, that all exists has being only because of the law. Know ye the law and ye shall be free, never be bound by the fetters of night. Far through strange spaces have I journeyed into the depths of the abyss of time until in the end all was revealed. Know ye that mystery is only mystery when it is knowledge unknown to man. When ye have plumbed the heart of all mystery, knowledge and wisdom will surely be thine. Seek ye and learn that time is the secret whereby ye may be free of this space. Long have I, wisdom, sought wisdom, I, and shall seek of eternity's end for know that ever before me receding shall move the goal I seek to attain. Even the lords of the cycles know that not yet have they reached the goal, for with all of their wisdom, they know that truth ever grows. Once, in a past time, I spoke to the dweller, Asked of the mystery of time and space. Asked him the question that surged in my being, saying, O oh Master, what is time? Then to me spoke he, the Master, know ye, O oh, both, in the beginning there was void and nothingness, a timeless, spaceless, nothingness. And into the nothingness came a thought purposeful, all pervading, and it filled the void. There existed no matter, only force, a movement, a vortex, or vibration of the purposeful thought that filled the void. And I questioned the master, saying, was this thought eternal? And answered me the dweller, saying, in the beginning, there was eternal thought, and for thought to be eternal, time must exist. So into the all-pervading thought grew the law of time. I time which exists through all space, floating in a smooth, rhythmic movement that is eternally in a state of fixation. Time changes not, but all things change in time. For time is the force that holds events separate, each in its own proper place. Time is not in motion, but ye move through time as your consciousness moves from one event to another. I, by time yet exist, all in all, an eternal one existence. Know ye that even though in the time ye are separate, yet still a one, in all times existent. Ceased then the voice of the dweller, and departed I to ponder and time. 
a new I that in these words lay wisdom and a way to explore the mysteries of time. Oft did I ponder the words of the dweller, then sought I to solve the mystery of time. Found I that time moves through strange angles. Yet only by curves could I hope to attain the key that would give me access to the time space. Found I that only by moving upward and yet again by moving to rightward could I be free from the time of the movement. Fourth I came from out of my body, moved in the movements that changed me in time. Strange were the sights I saw in my journeys, many the mysteries that opened to view. I saw I man's beginning, learned from the past that nothing is new. Seek ye, O oh man, to learn the pathway that leads through the spaces that are formed forth in time. Forget not, O oh man, with all of thy seeking that light is the goal ye shall seek to attain. Search ye for the light on thy pathway and ever for thee the goal shall endure. Let not thine heart turn ever to darkness. Light let shine so be a sun on the way. Know ye that eternal brightness, ya shall ever find thy soul hid in light, never fettered by bondage or darkness, ever it shines forth the sun of the light. I know, though hidden in darkness, your soul, a spark of the true flame, exists. Be ye one with the greatest of all lights. Find at the source, the end of thy goal. Light is life, for without the great light nothing can ever exist. Know ye, that in all formed matter, the heart of light always exists. I, even though bound in the darkness, inherent light always exists. Once I stood in the halls of AMENTI and heard the voice of the lords of AMENTI saying in tones that rang through the silence words of power, mighty and potent. Chanted they the song of the cycles, the words that open the path to beyond. I, I saw the great path open and looked for the instant into the beyond. Saw I the movements of the cycles, vast as the thought of the source could convey. Knew I then even infinity is moving on to some unthinkable end. Saw I that the cosmos is order and part of a movement that extends to all space, a party of an order of orders, constantly moving in a harmony of space. Saw I the wheeling of cycles like vast circles across the sky. Knew I then that all that has being is growing to meet yet another being in a far off grouping of space and of time. Knew I then that in words a power to open the planes that are hidden from man. I, that even in words lies hidden the key that will open above and below. Hark ye, now man, this word I leave with thee. Use it and ye shall find power in that sound. Say ye the word, Sinuru, and power ye shall find. Yet must ye understand that man is of light and light is of man. List ye, O man, and hear a mystery stranger than all that lies neath the sun. Know ye, O man, that all space is filled by worlds within worlds, I, one within the other yet separate by law. Once in my search for deep buried wisdom, I opened the door that bars them from man. Called I from the other planes of being one who is fairer than the daughters of men. I, I called her from out of the spaces, to shine as a light in the world of men. Used I the drum of the serpent. Wore I the robe of the purple and gold. Placed on my head I, the crown of silver. Around me the sir of cinnabar shone. Raised I my arms and cried the invocation that opens the path to the plains beyond, cried to the lords of the signs in their houses, lords of the two horizons, watchers of the treble gates, stand ye one at the right and one at the left as the star rises to his throne and rules over his sign. I, thou dark prince of Arulu, open the gates of the dim, hidden land and release her whom ye keep imprisoned. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye, dark lords and shining ones, and by their secret names, names which I know and can pronounce, hear ye and obey my will. Lit I then with flame my sir and called her in the space plains beyond. Daughter of light return from Arulu. Seven times and seven times have I passed through the fire. Food have I not eaten. Water have I not drunk. I call thee from Arulu, from the realms of Ekershegal. I summon the Lady of Light. Then before me rose the dark figures, I, the figures of the Lords of Aralu. Parted the before me and forth came the Lady of Light. Free was she now from the Lords of the Night, free to live in the light of the Earth Sun, free to live as a child of the light. Hear ye and listen, O oh my children. Magic is knowledge and only is law. Be not afraid of the power within thee, for it follows law as the stars in the sky. 
Know ye that to be without knowledge wisdom is magic and not of the law. But know ye that ever ye by your knowledge can approach closer to a place in the sun. List ye, my children, follow my teaching. Be ye ever seeker of light. Shine in the world of men all around thee, a light on the path that shall shine among men. Follow ye and learn of my magic. Know that all force is thine if thou wilt. Fear not the path that leads thee to knowledge but rather shun ye the dark road. Light is thine, O man, for the taking. Cast off the fetters and thou shalt be free. Know ye that thy soul is living in bondage fettered by fears that hold ye in thrall. Open thy eyes and see the great sunlight. Be not afraid for all is thine own. Fear is the lord of the dark A-R-U-L-U to he who never faced the dark fear. I know that fear has existence created by those who are bound by their fears. Shake off thy bondage, O children, and walk in the light of the glorious day. Never turn thy thoughts to the darkness and surely ye shall be one with the light. Man is only what he believeth, a brother of darkness or a child of the light. Come thou into the light, my children. Walk in the pathway that leads to the sun. Hark ye now and list to the wisdom. Use thou the word I have given unto thee. Use it and surely thou shalt find power and wisdom and light to walk in the way. Seek thee and find the key I have given and ever shalt thou be a child of the light. Hear ye and list ye, O children of Kim, to the words that I give that shall bring ye to the light. Ye know, O men, that I knew your fathers, I, your fathers in a time long ago. Deathless have I been through all the ages, living among ye since your knowledge began. Leading ye upward to the light of the great soul have I ever striven, drawing ye from out of the darkness of night. Know ye, O people amongst whom I walk, that I, both, have all of the knowledge and all of the wisdom known to man since the ancient days. Keeper have I been of the secrets of the great race, holder of the key that leads into life. Bringer up have I been to ye, O my children, even from the darkness of the ancient of days. List ye now to the words of my wisdom. List ye now to the message I bring. Hear ye now the words I give thee, and ye shall be raised from the darkness to light. Far in the past when first I came to thee, found I thee in caves of rocks. Lifted I thee by my power and wisdom until thou didst shine as men among men. I found I thee without any knowing. Only a little were ye raised beyond beasts. Found I ever the spark of thy consciousness until at last ye flamed as men. Now shall I speak to thee knowledge ancient beyond the thought of thy race. Know ye that we of the great race had and have knowledge that is more than man's. Wisdom we gained from the star-born races, wisdom and knowledge far beyond man. Down to us had descended the masters of wisdom as far beyond us as I am from thee. List ye now while I give ye wisdom. Use it and free thou shalt be. Know ye that in the pyramid I build it of the keys that shall show ye the way into life. I draw ye a line from the great image I build it to the apex of the pyramid built as a gateway. Draw ye another opposite in the same angle and direction. Dig ye and find that which I have hidden. There shall ye find the underground entrance to the secrets hidden before ye were men. Tell ye I now of the mystery of cycles that move in movements that are strange to the finite, for infinite are they beyond knowledge of man. Know ye that there are nine of the cycles, I, nine above and fourteen below, moving in harmony to the place of joining that shall exist in the future of time. Know ye that the lords of the cycles are units of consciousness sent from the others to unify this with the all. Highest are they of the consciousness of all the cycles, working in harmony with the law. Know they that in time all will be perfected, having none above and none below, but all one in a perfected infinity, a harmony of all in the oneness of all. Deep neath the earth's surface in the halls of Amenta sit the seven, the lords of the cycles, I, and another, the lord from below. Yet know thee that in infinity there is neither above nor below. But ever there is and ever shall be oneness of all when all is complete. Oft have I stood before the lords of the all. Oft at the fount of their wisdom have drunken and filled both my body and soul with their light. Spake they to me and told me of cycles and the law that gives them the means to exist. I spake to me the Lord of the Nine, saying, O, oath greater ye among earth children, but mysteries exist of which ye know not. Ye know that ye came from a space-time below this, and know ye shall travel to a space-time beyond. 
but little ye know of the mysteries within them, little ye know of the wisdom beyond. Know ye that ye as a whole in this consciousness are only a cell in the process of growth. The consciousness below thee is ever expanding in different ways from those known to thee. A. It, though in space-time below thee is ever growing in ways that are different from those that were part of the ways of thine own. For know that it grows as a result of thy growth but not in the same way that thou didst grow. The growth that thou had and have in the present had brought into being a cause and effect. No consciousness follows the path of those before it, else all would be repetition and vain. Each consciousness in the cycle it exists in follows its own path to the ultimate goal. Each plays its part in the plan of the cosmos. Each plays its part in the ultimate end. The farther the cycle, the greater its knowledge and ability to blend the law of the whole. Know ye, that ye in the cycles below us are working the minor parts of the law, while we of the cycle that extends to infinity take of the striving and build greater law. Each has his own part to play in the cycles. Each has his work to complete in his way. The cycle below thee is yet not below thee but only formed for a need that exists. For know ye that the fountain of wisdom that sends forth the cycles is eternally seeking new powers to gain. Ye know that knowledge is gained only by practice, and wisdom comes forth only from knowledge, and thus are the cycles created by law. Means are they for the gaining of knowledge for the plane of law that is the source of the all. The cycle below is not truly below but only different in space and in time. The consciousness there is working and testing lesser things than those ye are. And no, just as ye are working on greater, so above ye are those who are also working as ye are on yet other laws. The difference that exists between the cycles is only an ability to work with the law. We, who have been in cycles beyond thee, are those who first came forth from the source and have in the passage through time-space gained ability to use laws of the greater that are far beyond the conception of man. Nothing there is that is really below thee but only a different operation of law. Look thee above or look thee below, the same shall ye find. For all is but part of the oneness that is at the source of the law. The consciousness below thee is part thine own as we are a part of thine. Ye as a child had not the knowledge that came to ye when ye became a man. Compare ye the cycles to man in his journey from birth unto death and see in the cycle below thee the child with the knowledge he has and see ye yourself as the child grown older advancing in knowledge as time passes on. See ye, we also at the child grown to manhood with the knowledge and wisdom that came with the years. So also oh, both are the cycles of consciousness, children in different stages of growth, yet all from the one source of wisdom, and all to the wisdom returning again. Ceased then he from speaking and sat in the silence that comes to the lords. Then again spake he unto me, saying, oh, Both long have we sat in a mentor, guarding the flame of life in the halls. Yet no, we are still part of our cycles with our vision reaching unto them and beyond. I know we that of all, nothing else matters excepting the growth we can gain with our soul. Know we the flesh is fleeting. The things men count great are nothing to us. The things we seek are not of the body but are only the perfected state of the soul. When ye as men can learn that nothing but progress of soul can count in the end, then truly ye are free from all bondage, free to work in a harmony of law. No, O oh man, ye should aim at perfection, for only thus can ye attain to the goal. Though ye should know that nothing is perfect, yet it should be thy aim and thy goal. Ceased again the voice of the nine, and into my consciousness the words had sunk. Now, seek I ever more wisdom that I may be perfect in law with thee all. Soon go I down to the halls of a mentor to live beneath the cold flower of life. Ye whom I have taught shall never more see me. Yet live I forever in the wisdom I taught. All that man is is because of his wisdom. All that he shall be is the result of his cause. List ye, now to my voice and become greater than common man. Lift thine eyes upward, let light fill thy being, be thou ever children of light. Only by effort shall ye grow upward to the plane where light is the all of the all. Be ye the master of all that surrounds thee. Never be mastered by the effects of thy life. Create there never more perfect causes and in time shalt thou be a son of the light free, let thine soul soar ever upward, free from the bondage and fetters of night. Lift thine eyes to the sun in the sky space. For thee, let it be a symbol of life. Know that thou art the greater light, perfect in thine own sphere, when thou art free.
Look not ever into the blackness. Lift up thine eyes to the space above. Free let thine light flame upward and shalt thou be a child of the light. List ye, O man, to the words of my wisdom, list to the voice of Thoth the Atlantean. Conquered have I the law of time-space. Knowledge have I gained of the future of time. Know I that man in his movement through space-time shall ever be one with the all. Know ye, O man, that all of the future is an open book to him who can read. All effect shall bring forth its causes as all effects grew from the first cause. Know ye the future is not fixed to stable but varies as cause brings forth an effect. Look in the cause thou shalt bring into being and surely thou shalt see that all is effect. So, O oh man, be sure the effects that ye bring forth are ever causes of more perfect effects. Know ye the future is never in fixation but follows man's free will as it moves through the movements of time-space toward the goal where a new time begins. Man can only read the future through the causes that bring the effects. Seek ye within the causation and surely ye shall find the effects. List ye, O oh man, while I speak of the future, speak of the effect that follows the cause. Know ye that man in his journey lightward is ever seeking escape from the night that surrounds him, like the shadows that surround the stars in the sky and like the stars in the sky space, he, too, shall shine from the shadows of night. Ever his destiny shall lead him onward until he is one with the light. I, though his way lies midst the shadows, ever before him glows the great light. Dark though the way be yet shall he conquer the shadows that flow around him like night. Far in the future, I see man as light-born, free from the darkness that fetters the soul, living in light without the bounds of the darkness to cover the light that is light of their soul. Know ye, O man, before ye attain this that many the dark shadows shall fall on your light striving to quench with the shadows of darkness the light of the soul that strives to be free. Great is the struggle between light and darkness, age old and yet ever new. Yet, no in a time, far in the future, light shall be all and darkness shall fall. List ye, O man, to my words of wisdom. Prepare and ye shall not bind your light. Man has risen and man has fallen as ever new waves of consciousness flow from the great abyss below us toward the sun of their goal. Ye, my children, have risen from a state that was little above the beast until now of all men ye are greatest. Yet before thee were others greater than thee. Yet tell I thee as before the others have fallen, so also shall ye come to an end. And upon the land where ye dwell now, barbarians shall dwell and in turn rise to light. Forgotten shall be the ancient wisdom, yet ever shall live though hidden from men. I, in the land thou callest came, races shall rise and races shall fall. Forgotten shalt thou be of the children of men. Yet thou shalt have moved to a star space beyond this leaving behind this place where thou hast dwelt. The soul of man moves ever onward, bound not by any one star, but ever moving to the great goal before him where he is dissolved in the light of the all. Know ye that ye shall ever go onward, moved by the law of cause and effect until in the end both become one eye, man, after ye have gone, others shall move in the places ye lived. Knowledge and wisdom shall all be forgotten and only a memory of God's shall survive. As I to the image of God by my knowledge, so ye too shall be gods of the future because of your knowledge far above theirs. Yet know ye that all through the ages, man shall have access to law when he will. Ages to come shall see revival of wisdom to those who shall inherit thy place on this star. They shall, in turn, come into wisdom and learn to banish the darkness by light. Yet greatly must they strive through the ages to bring unto themselves the freedom of light. Then shall there come into man the great warfare that shall make the earth tremble and sake in its course. I, then shall the dark brothers open the warfare between light and the night. When man again shall conquer the ocean and fly in the air on wings like the birds, when he has learned to harness the lightning, then shall the time of warfare begin. Great shall the battle be twixt the forces great the warfare of darkness and light. Nation shall rise against nation using the dark forces to shatter the earth. Weapons of force shall wipe out the earth man until half of the races of men shall be gone. Then shall come forth the sons of the morning and give their edict to the children of men, saying, O men, cease from thy striving against thy brother. Only thus can ye come to the light. Cease from thy unbelief, O my brother, and follow the path and know ye aright. 
Then shall men cease from their striving, brother against brother and father against son. Then shall the ancient home of my people rise from its place beneath the dark ocean waves. Then shall the age of light be unfolded with all men seeking the light of the goal. Then shall the brothers of light rule the people. Banished shall be the darkness of night. I, the children of men shall progress onward and upward to the great goal. Children of light shall they become. Flame of the flame shall their souls ever be. Knowledge and wisdom shall be man's in the great age for he shall approach the eternal flame, the source of all wisdom, the place of beginning, that is yet one with the end of all things. I, in a time that is yet unborn all shall be one and one shall be all. Man, a perfect flame of this cosmos, shall move forward to a place in the stars. I shall move even from out of this space-time into another beyond the stars. Long have ye listened to me, O oh my children, long have ye listened to the wisdom of Thoth. Now I depart from ye into darkness. Now go I to the halls of Ementa, that to dwell in the future when light shall come again to man. Yet, know ye, my spirit shall ever be with thee, guiding thy feet in the pathway of light. Guard ye the secrets I leave with thee, and surely my spirit will guard thee through life. Keep thine eyes ever on the pathway to wisdom. Keep the light as thy goal evermore. Fetter not thy soul in bondage of darkness, for he let it wing in its flight to the stars. Now I depart thee to dwell in a mentor. Be thou my children in this life and the next. The time will come when ye, too, shall be deathless, living from age to age a light among men. Guard ye the entrance to the halls of Amenta. Guard ye the secrets I have hidden among ye. Let not the wisdom be cast to barbarians. Secret shall thou keep it for those who seek light. Now depart I. Receive thou my blessing. Take thou my way and follow the light. Blend thou thy soul in the great essence. One, with the great light let thy consciousness be. Call thou on me when thou dost need me. Use my name three times in a row, Shekhetet, Aralich, Bolmelites. List ye, O man, hear ye the wisdom. Hear ye the word that shall fill thee with life. Hear ye the word that shall banish the darkness. Hear ye the voice that shall banish the night. Mystery and wisdom have I brought to my children, knowledge and power descended from old. Know ye not that all shall be opened when ye shall find the oneness of all. One shall ye be with the masters of mystery, conquerors of death and masters of life. I, ye shall learn of the flower of Amenta the blossom of life that shines in the halls. In spirit shall ye reach the halls of Amenta and bring back the wisdom that liveth in light. Know ye the gateway to power is secret. Know ye the gateway to life is through death. I, through death but not as ye know death but a death that is life and is fire and is light. Desireth thou to know the deep, hidden secret? Look in thy heart where the knowledge is bound. Know that in thee the secret is hidden, the source of all life and the source of all death. List ye, O man, while I tell the secret, reveal unto thee the secret of old. Deep in earth's heart lies the flower, the source of the spirit that binds all in its form. Or know ye that the earth is living in body as thou art alive in thine own formed form. The flower of life is as thine own place of spirit and streams through the earth as thine flows through thy form giving of life to the earth and its children, renewing the spirit from form into form. This is the spirit that is form of thy body, shaping and moulding into its form. Know ye, O man, that thy form is dual, balanced in polarity while formed in its form. Know that when fast on thee death approaches, it is only because thy balance is shaken. It is only because one pole has been lost. Know that the secret of life in a mentor is the secret of restoring the balance of poles. All that exists has form and is living because of the spirit of life in its poles. See ye not that in earth's heart is the balance of all things that exist and have being on its face? The source of thy spirit is drawn from earth's heart, for in thy form thou are one with the earth. When thou hast learned to hold thine own balance, then shalt thou draw on the balance of earth. Exist then shalt thou while earth is existing, changing in form only when earth, too, shalt change tasting not of death but one with this planet, holding thy form till all pass away. List ye, O man, whilst I give the secret so that ye, too, shalt taste not of change. One hour each day shalt thou lie with thine head pointed to the place of the positive pole, north. One hour each day shalt thy head be pointed to the place of the negative pole, south. 
whilst thy head is placed to the northward, hold thou thy consciousness from the chest to the head. And when thy head is placed southward, hold thou thy thought from chest to the feet. Hold thou in balance once in each seven, and thy balance will retain the whole of its strength. I, if thou be old, thy body will freshen and thy strength will become as a youth's. This is the secret known to the masters by which they hold off the fingers of death. Neglect not to follow the path I have shown, for when thou hast passed beyond years to a hundred to neglect it will mean the coming of death. Hear ye my words, and follow the pathway. Keep thou thy balance and live on in life. Hear ye, O man, and list to my voice. List to the wisdom that gives thee of death. When at the end of thy work appointed, thou may desire to pass from this life, pass to the plain where the sons of the morning live and have being as children of light. Pass without pain and pass without sorrow into the plain where is eternal light. First lie at rest with thine head to the eastward. Fold thou thy hands at the source of thy life, solar plexus. Place thou thy consciousness in the life seat. Whirl it and divide to north and to south. Send thou the one out toward the northward. Send thou the other out to the south. Relax thou the hold upon thy being. Forth from thy form will thy silver spark fly, upward and onward to the sun of the morning, blending with light at one with its source. There it shall flame till desire shall be created. Then shall return to a place in a form. Know ye, O men, that thus pass the great souls, changing it will from life unto life. Thus ever passes the avatar, willing his death as he wills his own life. List ye, O man, drink of my wisdom. Learn ye the secret that is master of time. Learn ye how those ye call masters are able to remember the lives of the past. Great is the secret yet easy to master, giving to thee the mastery of time. When upon thee death fast approaches, fear not but know ye a master of death. Relax thy body, resist not with tension. Place in thy heart the flame of thy soul. Swiftly then sweep it to the seat of the triangle. Hold for a moment, then move to the goal. This thy goal is the place between thine eyebrows. The place where the memory of life must hold sway. Hold thou thy flame here in thy brain seat until the fingers of death grasp thy soul. Then as thou pass through the state of transition, surely the memories of life shall pass, too. Then shall the past be as one with the present. Then shall the memory of all be retained. Free shalt thou be from all retrogression. The things of the past shall live in today. List ye, O man, to the deep hidden wisdom, lost to the world since the time of the dwellers, lost and forgotten by men of this age. Know ye this earth is but a portal, guarded by powers unknown to man. Yet the dark lords hide the entrance that leads to the heaven-born land. Know ye, the way to the sphere of Varilu is guarded by barriers opened only to light-born man. Upon earth, I am the holder of the keys to the gates of the sacred land. Command I, by the powers beyond me, to leave the keys to the world of man. Before I depart, I give ye the secrets of how ye may rise from the bondage of darkness, cast off the fetters of flesh that have bound ye, rise from the darkness into the light. Know ye, the soul must be cleansed of its darkness, ere ye may enter the portals of light. Thus, I establish among ye the mysteries so that the secrets may always be found. I, though man may fall into darkness, always the light will shine as a guide. Hidden in darkness, veiled in symbols, always the way to the portal will be found. Man in the future will deny the mysteries but always the way the seeker will find. Now I command ye to maintain my secrets, giving only to those ye have tested, so that the pure may not be corrupted, so that the power of truth may prevail. List ye now to the unveiling of mystery. List to the symbols of mystery I give. Make of it a religion for only thus will its essence remain. Regions there are two between this life and the Great One, travelled by the souls who depart from this earth. Duart, the home of the powers of illusion, Sekhet Hetzbet, the house of the gods. Osiris, the symbol of the guard of the portal, who turns back the souls of unworthy men. Beyond lies the sphere of the heaven-born powers, Aralu, the land where the Great Ones have passed. There, when my work among men has been finished, will I join the Great Ones of my ancient home. Seven at the mansions of the House of the Mighty, three guards the portal of each house from the darkness, fifteen the ways that lead to Duart. Twelve are the houses of the Lords of Illusion, facing four ways, each of them different. 
40 and 2 are the great powers judging the dead who seek for the portal. 4 are the sons of Harris, 2 are the guards of East and West of Isis, the mother who pleads for her children, Queen of the Moon, reflecting the sun. Bar is the essence, living forever. Kar is the shadow that man knows as life. Bar cometh not until Kar is incarnate. These are mysteries to preserve through the ages. Keys are they of life and of death. Hear ye now the mystery of mysteries, learn of the sir beginningless and endless, the form of he who is one and in all. Listen and hear it, go forth and apply it, thus will ye travel the way that I go. Mystery and mystery, yet clear to the light born, the secret of all I now will reveal. I will declare a secret to the initiated, but let the door be wholly shut against the profane. Three is the mystery, come from the Great One, hear, and light on thee will dawn. In the primeval, dwell three unities. Other than these, none can exist. These are the equilibrium, source of creation, one God, one truth, one point of freedom. Three come forth from the three of the balance, all life, all good, all power. Three are the qualities of God in his light home, infinite power, infinite wisdom, infinite love. Three are the powers given to the masters, to transmute evil, assist good, use discrimination. Three are the things inevitable for God to perform, manifest power, wisdom and love. Three are the powers creating all things, divine love possessed of perfect knowledge, divine wisdom knowing all possible means, divine power possessed by the joint will of divine love and wisdom. Three are the circles, states of existence, the sir of light where dwells nothing but God, and only God can traverse it, the sir of chaos where all things by nature arise from death, the sir of awareness where all things spring from life. All things animate are of three states of existence, chaos of death, liberty and humanity and felicity of heaven. Three necessities control all things, beginning in the great deep, the sir of chaos, plenitude in heaven. Three are the paths of the soul, man, liberty, light. Three are the hindrances, lack of endeavor to obtain knowledge, non-attachment to God, attachment to evil. In man, the three are manifest. Three are the kings of power within. Three are the chambers of the mysteries, found yet not found in the body of man. Hear ye now of he who is liberated, freed from the bondage of life into light. Knowing the source of all worlds shall be open. I even the gates of Aralu shall not be barred. Yet heed, O man, who wouldest enter heaven. If ye be not worthy, better it be to fall into the fire. Know ye the celestials pass through the pure flame. At every revolution of the heavens, they bathe in the fountains of light. List ye, O man, to this mystery, long in the past before ye were man-born, I dwelled in ancient Atlantis. There in the temple, I drank of the wisdom, poured as a fountain of light from the dweller. Give the key to ascend to the presence of light in the great world. Stood I before the Holy One enthroned in the flower of fire. Veiled was he by the lightnings of darkness, else my soul by the glory had been shattered. Forth from the feet of his throne like the diamond, rolled forth four rivers of flame from his footstool, rolled through the channels of clouds to the man-world. Filled was the hall with spirits of heaven. Wonder of wonders was the starry palace. Above the sky, like a rainbow of fire and sunlight, were formed the spirits. Sang they the glories of the Holy One. Then from the midst of the fire came a voice, Behold the glory of the first cause. I beheld the light, high above all darkness, reflected in my own being. I attained, as it were, to the God of all gods, the Spirit Sun, the Sovereign of the Sun Spheres. There is one, even the first, who hath no beginning, who hath no end, who hath made all things, who govern all, who is good, who is just, who illumines, who sustains. Then from the throne, the poured a great radiance, surrounding and lifting my soul by its power. Swiftly I moved through the spaces of heaven, shown was I the mystery of mysteries, shown the secret heart of the cosmos. Carried was I to the land of Aralu, stood before the lords in their houses. Opened they the doorway so I might glimpse the primeval chaos. Shuddered my soul to the vision of horror, shrank back my soul from the ocean of darkness. Then saw I the need for the barriers, saw the need for the lords of Aralu. Only they with their infinite balance could stand in the way of the inpouring chaos. Only they could guard God's creation. Then did I pass around the Sir of Eight. Saw all the souls who had conquered the darkness. Saw the splendor of light where they dwelled. 
Long Dai to take my place in the surf but Long Dai also for the way I had chosen when I stood in the halls of a mentor and made my choice to the work I would do. Passed I from the halls of Aralu down to the earth space where my body lay. Arose I from the earth where I rested. Stood I before the dweller. Gave my pledge to renounce my great right until my work on earth was completed until the age of darkness be passed. List ye, O man, to the words I shall give ye. In them shall ye find the essence of life. Before I return to the halls of Amenta, taught shall ye be the secrets of secrets, how ye too may arise to the light. Preserve them and guard them, hide them in symbols, so the profane will laugh and renounce. In every land form ye the mysteries. Make the way hard for the seeker to tread. Thus will the weak and the wavering be rejected. Thus will the secrets be hidden and guarded, held till the time when the wheel shall be turned. Through the dark ages, waiting and watching, my spirit shall remain in the deep hidden land. When one has passed all the trials of the outer, summon ye me by the key that ye hold. Then will I, the initiator answer, come from the halls of the gods in a mentor. Then will I receive the initiate, give him the words of power. Hark ye, remember, these words of warning, bring not to me one lacking in wisdom, and pure in heart, a weak in his purpose. Else I will withdraw from ye your power to summon me from the place of my sleeping. Now go ye forth and summon thy brothers so that I may impart the wisdom to light thy path when my presence is gone. Come to the chamber beneath my temple. Eat not food until three days are past. There will I give thee the essence of wisdom so that with power ye may shine amongst men. There will I give unto thee the secrets so that ye too may rise to the heavens, God men in truth as in essence ye be. Depart now and leave me while I summon those ye know of but as yet know not. Now ye assemble, my children, waiting to hear the secret of secrets which shall give ye power to unfold the God man, give ye the way to eternal life. Plainly shall I speak of the unveiled mysteries. No dark sayings shall I give unto thee. Open thine ears now, my children. Hear and obey the words that I give. First I shall speak of the fetters of darkness which bind ye in chains to the sphere of the earth. Darkness and light are both of one nature, different only in seeming, for each arose from the source of all. Darkness is disorder. Light is order. Darkness transmuted is light of the light. This, my children, your purpose in being transmutation of darkness to light. Here ye know of the mystery of nature, the relations of life to the earth where it dwells. Know ye, ye are threefold in nature, physical, astral, and mental in one. Three of the qualities of each of the natures, nine in all, as above, so below. In the physical of these channels, the blood which moves in vortical motion, reacting on the heart to continue its beating. Magnetism which moves through the nerve paths, carrier of energies to all cells and tissues. Akasa which flows through channels, subtle yet physical, completing the channels. Each of the three attuned with each other, each affecting the life of the body. Form they the skeletal framework through which the subtle ether flows. In the mastery lies the secret of life in the body. Relinquished only by will of the adept when his purpose in living is done. Three are the natures of the astral, mediator is between above and below, not of the physical, not of the spiritual, but able to move above and below. Three are the natures of mind, carrier it of the will of the Great One, arbitrator of cause and effect in thy life. Thus is formed the threefold being, directed from above by the power of four. Above and beyond man's threefold nature lies the realm of the spiritual self. Four is it in qualities, shining in each of the planes of existence, but thirteen in one, the mystical number. Based on the qualities of man of the brothers, each shall direct the unfoldment of being, each shall channels be of the great one. On earth, man is in bondage, bound by space and time to the earth plane. Encircling each planet, a wave of vibration binds him to his plane of unfoldment. Yet within man is the key to releasement, within man may freedom be found. When ye have released the self from the body, rise to the outermost bounds of your earth plane. Speak ye the word or ilila. Then for a time your light will be lifted, free may ye pass the barriers of space. For a time of half of the sun, six hours, free may ye pass the barriers of earth plane, see and know those who are beyond thee. Yea, to the highest worlds may ye pass. 
see your own possible heights of unfoldment know all earthly futures of soul bound are ye in your body but by the power ye may be free this is the secret whereby bondage shall be replaced by freedom for thee calm let thy mind be at rest be thy body conscious only of freedom from flesh center thy being on the goal of thy longing think over and over that thou wouldst be free think of this word laramiel gan over and over in thy mind let it sound drift with the sound to the place of thy longing free from the bondage of flesh by thy will he while i give the greatest of secrets how ye may enter the halls of amenta enter the place of the immortals as i did stand before the lords in their places lie ye down in rest of thy body calm thy mind so no thought disturbs thee pure must ye be in mind and in purpose else only failure will come unto thee vision amenta as i have told in my tablets long with fullness of heart to be there stand before the lords in thy mind's eye pronounce the words of power i give mentally mekud el shabel hail sur ben el zabrut zin efrim qual relax thy mind and thy body then be sure your soul will be called now give i the key to shambhala the place where my brothers live in the darkness darkness but filled with light of the sun darkness of earth but light of the spirit guides for you when my day is done leave thou thy body as i have taught thee pass to the barriers of the deep hidden place stand before the gates and their guardians command thy entrance by these words i am the light in me is no darkness free am i of the bondage of night open thou the way of the 12 and the 1 so i may pass to the realm of wisdom when they refuse thee as surely they will command them to open by these words of power i am the light for me and no barriers open i command by the secret of secrets adam elahim sabat zer adam then if thy words have been truth of the highest open for thee the barriers will fall now i leave thee my children down yet up to the halls shall i go win ye the way to me my children truly my brothers shall you become thus finish i my writings keys let them be to those who come after but only to those who seek my wisdom for only for these am i the key and the way tablet i the history of both the atlantean Tablet 2, the halls of Amenta. Tablet 3, the key of wisdom. Tablet IV, the space ball. are the mysterious sayings which Jesus, the Living One, spoke and which Didymos, the twin, Judas, who is called Thomas, wrote, between 8 to 40 days after his resurrection. 1. And he said, whoever hears these words and discovers their meaning, labors and finds life, see, verse 58, will not ever taste of death the loss of the meaning of these words. 2. Jesus said, the one who seeks for the meaning of these words should not leave off but keep on seeking for it until he finds the mystery. When he finds the meaning, the mystery, he will be troubled, labor and find life. Verse 58 and will marvel. When he is troubled and when he marvels then he will be surprised for he will reign over the world and rule over the all and when he rules then he will rest the Sabbath rest in the seventh millennium. 3. Jesus said, Should those who lure and lead you say, Behold, the kingdom is up in the sky, only the religious leaders can understand it, then the birds of the sky, religious leaders, who consume the seed, or word of God, will beat you to it, hide the keys and defraud you of it. Verse 39, Luke chapter 11 verse 52, If they should tell you, it is under the earth, subject to earthly or scholarly teachings, or in the sea, subject to the teachings of the church, then the fish of the sea, Christian leaders, will beat you to it. It is rather that the kingdom is both within you and without you don't need leaders to see it. Those of you who know yourselves, life, like authority, truth will find out through laboring and finding life that this is true. When you have labored and find out who you are, you will then become known in the biblical sense when Jesus becomes you verse 108 and will recognize that you are the sons of the living father verse 106. 
But if you do not labor and come to know yourselves, you dwell in fleshly poverty and you are yourselves that poverty fleshly. For Jesus said, Let the man who is old in days religious men at the end of the age not hesitate to ask a small child of seven days, the elect in the seventh millennium, about the place of life. Verse 50 And he, by asking the elect on that Sabbath day of rest, will come alive by coming to grasp the meaning of these words. For many who are first those influenced by infiltrators, Jude etc. will become last abased stripped of their kingdom and the last the elect first exalted elevated given to reign. They will indeed become one and the same, come to agree with the elect. 5. Jesus said, Know what is before your face, the secret message encoded within the scriptures and what is concealed, the keys to this secret language. Verse 39, Luke chapter 11 verse 52, From you will be revealed to you. But nothing is hidden by the scribes and Pharisees, verse 39, Luke chapter 11 verse 52 And afterwards the church that will not be revealed, the keys will be restored, nor is anything buried under an earthly teaching that will not be raised, seen in its higher level meaning. 6. His disciples asked him and said to him, How do you want us to fast? Do without the logos, how shall we pray? For the kingdom to come, how shall we give alms? Of our own resources instead of God's. What diet shall we observe? Canon shall we accept? Jesus said, Do not tell lies about what is written in the scriptures, or to what you hate by pursuing the things of this world, for all things are plain in the sight. Interpretation of heaven, the higher meaning. All things are disclosed before truth, which is why you don't lie. But nothing is hidden, like the keys that will not be made manifest, and nothing has been covered up by the scribes, Pharisees and later, the Christians that will not be uncovered by the elect. 7. Jesus said, Blessed is the lion, false church that has been devoured by Satan. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 that becomes man, an elect one, becomes enlivened, when consumed, taken over, by man, the elect ones at the end of the age, and cursed is the man of the early church whom the lion, Satan, consumes, infiltrates, Jude chapter 4, etc., and the lion, the devil, as the spirit of Antichrist becomes man, changes Christianity into his image. 8. And he said, The kingdom is like a wise fisherman who cast his net into the sea, Christian era, and drew it up from the sea, Christian age, full of small fish, various Christian denominations. Among them the wise fisherman found a fine, note that, large, is a key that has to do with, fine, large fish, singular teaching, true teaching of Christ. He threw all the small fish back, Christian denominations, into the sea, age of Christendom, and chose the large, fine, fish Christian teaching, without difficulty because it was obvious which one was the finest whoever has two ears to hear verse 33 let him hear both upper and lower teachings 9 jesus said now the sower son of man went out took a handful of seeds the word and scattered them across the age some of these books fell on the road early church influenced by the traditions road of the scribes and pharisees see verse 39 luke chapter 11 verse 52 the birds leaders who inspired by satan consumed the seed or word came and gathered them up confiscated god's word and removed it others fell on the rock the early church did not take root in the stony unprepared soil and did not produce his fruit and others fell on thorns, those tempted with the riches of this world, they choked the seeds, the word, and worms ate them, removed the apocrypha from the Bible. And others fell on the good soil, the elect of the seventh day, and produced good fruit, is it for sixty per measure, for those of the six thousand years, and a hundred and twenty per measure, a new dimension to, or a doubling of the sixty. 10. Jesus said, I have cast fire, a trial and a judgment upon the world, and see, I am guarding it until it blazes, consumes, or else refines. 11. Jesus said, This heaven will pass away, false Christianity, and the one above it will pass away, false Judaism. The dead, so-called Christians and Jews, are not alive, and the living, the elect will not die, since it is impossible to fool them with false teachings. In the days when you consumed what is dead, Judeo-Christian teachings, you made it what is alive, recognized it and lived. When you come to dwell in the light, what will you do? On the day early in the church age, when you were one, knew the heavenly and earthly interpretations, you became two, knew only the earthly. But when you become two, divided, what will you do in order to recover the lost unity within? 12. The disciples said to Jesus, We know that you, the way, truth and life will depart from us. 
who is to be our leader along the way to truth and life. Jesus said to them, wherever you are, you are to go to James the righteous, for whose sake heaven and earth, the two, the upper and lower meanings, came into being, became one, the higher is couched in the lower. 13. Jesus said to his disciples, compare me to someone and tell me whom I am like. Simon Peter, the church, said to him, you are like a righteous angel, miracle worker, luminous being. Matthew, who is also known as Levi, the Jews, said to him, you are like a wise philosopher, as in how they always call him rabbi. Thomas the elect said to him, Master, my mouth is wholly incapable of saying whom you are like. Point one four. Jesus said, I am not your master because you have imbibed from his mouth verse 108 you have become intoxicated by the bubbling spring of god s word which i have measured out in precise terminology which is why thomas cannot speak it and he took him and withdrew from the jews and christians and told him three things that there would be three testaments when the gospel of thomas was later returned at the end of the age to his companions the jews and christians they asked him what did jesus say to you explain these secrets to us thomas said to them if i tell you one of the things which he told me about how there would be a third testament you will pick up stones the old and new testaments and throw them at use them against me a fire a trial and a judgment will come out of the stones testaments and burn you jews and christians up Jesus said to them, if you fast from the word instead of the world, verse 27, you will give rise to sin, a lack of understanding in a sinful age for yourselves. And if you pray for the kingdom to come instead of seeking for it, you will be condemned. And if you give alms as opposed to the keys of knowledge, verse 39, Luke chapter 11, verse 52, you will do harm to your spirits. By focusing on physical needs instead of spiritual, then you go into any land and walk about in the districts throughout all Christendom if they receive you, accept you, or give you a hearing, eat what they will set before you, use whatever scriptures they accept as authoritative, and heal, restore the mystery to, be spiritually, sick among them. For what goes into your mouth, scripturally, will not defile you, but that which issues from your mouth against the scriptures, it is that which will defile you. 15. Jesus said, when you see one who is not born of woman, not of Mary, but of spirit and truth, prostrate yourselves on your faces and worship him that one is your father, whose word is truth. John chapter 17 verse 17. 16. Jesus said, men think, perhaps, that it is peace which I have come to cast upon the world. They do not know that it is dissension which I have come to cast upon the earth, fire, trials, sword, a third sword, or testament issues from his mouth on his return, bringing to the two they already have to three, see Luke chapter 22 verse 36, and war between those of two testaments against those of three. For there will be five in a house, those of the two testaments plus those of the three, three, the elect will be against two, false Christians, and at the end of time, two, false Christians, against three, the elect who return to the earlier teaching, the father, those of the three testaments, against the son, those of the two testaments, and the son, those of the two testaments, against the father, those of the three testaments, and they will stand solitary together as one in the end. 17. Jesus said, I shall give you what no eye has seen as opposed to what has been seen for 2,000 years and what no ear has heard for 2,000 years and what no hand has touched for 2,000 years and what has never occurred to the human mind. The keys of knowledge verse 39, Luke chapter 11 verse 52 is revelation. 18. The disciples said to Jesus, tell us how our end will be. Jesus said, have you discovered, then, the beginning, that in the beginning the New Testament writers believed in scriptures outside of the canon, that you look for the end, some better proof than that simple fact. For where the beginning is the basic fact of their usage and belief by the New Testament writers, there will the end be, the return to that original understanding. Blessed is he who will take his place in the beginning, will stand with the New Testament writers, he will know the end, the return to the teaching, and will not experience the death of this mystery. 19. Jesus said, Blessed is he who came into being, established the foundation of this mystery before it was lost, before he came into being a second time at the end of the age. If you become my disciples and listen to my words, which witness to these writings from the time the scriptures were originally written, these stones, testaments, will minister, reveal their mysteries to you. 
For there are five trees for you in paradise, the two groups, those of the two trees, volumes or dispensations, plus those of the three which remain undisturbed summer, harvest time and winter, the unfruitful season, and whose leaves which are for the healing of the nations, do not fall but remain throughout for us to read or consume. Whoever becomes acquainted with them loves both sets of trees and their fruits will not experience or be subject to the death of the mystery. 20. The disciples said to Jesus, Tell us what the kingdom of heaven is like. He said to them, It is like a mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds hidden in the scriptures. But when it falls on tilled soil, a heart prepared to receive and accept it, the elect it produces a great plant tree, or testament, and a teaching, and becomes a shelter for birds of the sky, Christian and Jewish leaders. 21. Mary, the age, who cannot touch him until his higher level is revealed, said to Jesus, Whom are your disciples like? He said, They are like children, the elect who have settled in a field which is not theirs the world. When the owners of the field come, Jews and Christians, the buyers and merchants, they will say, Let us have back our field. Religion excommunicate the elect within them, they will undress in their presence, that is, they remove their religious clothing or affiliations in order to let them have back their field, Christianity, Judaism and give it back to them, see Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 come out and help my people. Therefore I say to you, if the owner, the father of the house of Israel knows that the thief, Satan, is coming to steal God's word and hide the keys of knowledge verse page 2239, Luke chapter 11 verse 52, Luke chapter 11 verse 52, he will begin his vigil before he comes by revealing his plan to the elect of the early church and will not let him into his house of his domain, the true church, to carry away his goods, scriptures, keys and mysteries. You, disciples, then, be on your guard against the world which has taken over the religious institutions. Arm yourselves with great strength, the couching of the upper in the lower, lest to robbers of God's word, find a way to come to you, and steal the keys, and hide the upper meaning, but its image remains safely preserved and couched in the lower, for the difficulty which you expect the loss of the upper level meaning, will, surely, materialize the mysteries to be subverted and lost for two thousand years. Let there be among you a man of understanding to restore it. When the grain ripened, fell on tilled soil and produced one hundred and twenty-fold, he came quickly with his sickle in his hand and reaped it. Whoever has ears to hear, like the man of understanding, let him hear. 22. Jesus saw infants the elect on the seventh day, being suckled by the true, spiritual mother. He said to his disciples, These infants being suckled are like those who enter the kingdom. They said to him, Shall we, then, as children, enter the kingdom? Jesus said to them, When you make the two one, see the lower meanings as images of vessels of the high ones, and when you make the inside, where the search for the kingdom begins, like the outside, which you discover actually corresponds to your inner self, and the outside like the inside, you replace their image with the Father S, which is spread out over the earth, verse 113, and the above, what is in the sky, like the below, what is under the earth, or in the sea, and when you make the male, the spiritual seed of the Father and the female, which brings forth fleshly seed. Until the Father S seed is brought forth through the fleshly level by means of the spiritual revelation, one and the same, so that the male, the spiritual level of the scriptures, not be male, not purely spiritual in nature, but as that which is couched in the flesh as well, nor the female, the earthly or fleshly level meaning female, because when the spiritual is discovered to be couched within the fleshly level, it brings forth the holy children, or the elect as spoken of by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 14. And when you fashion eyes, those two levels of seeing in the place of an eye, the fleshly level only, and a right hand which knows what Jesus is doing, in place of a left hand which doesn't, and a right foot which knows where it is going, in place of a left foot which doesn't, and a higher likeness in place of a lower likeness, seeing the higher is couched in the lower, then will you enter the kingdom. 23. Jesus said, I shall choose you, one out of the chase, a thousand, and two out of the chase, ten thousand, and they shall stand as a single one, Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 30, etc. 24. His disciples said to him, Show us the place where you are, since it is necessary for us to seek it. He said to them, Whoever has both ears, let him hear. 
there is light. Where Jesus, the light of the world is within a man of light, Jesus has become that man, and that the upper meaning, light of Christ, lights up the whole world. If it does not shine, if the light within you is merely darkness, only one ear, which only hears the fleshly teachings of men. 25 Jesus said, Love your brother, the elect both in their day, the early rain, and those to come, the latter rain, like your soul, guard him like the pupil of your eye, for indeed, they are your eyes. 26 Jesus said, You see the mote in your brother's eye, your objections to the books he accepts, because you look not on the hidden language they convey, but only on their dating and acceptance and credibility etc. But you do not see the beam in your own eye, that your own books refer to them, and that both sets of books unlock to the very same keys. When you cast the beam, the false concept of the canon, out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to back down from your objections, to cast the moat from your brother's eye, your fleshly level objections to his way of seeing. Point 27, Jesus said, Unless you fast unto the world, you will in no way find the kingdom of God, and unless you observe the Sabbath day, the millennium, after the six thousand years, as a Sabbath, one who is at rest in the truth, you will not come to see the Father, the light within those images. 28. Jesus said, I took my place in the midst of the world, and I appeared to them in and on the level of the flesh, as a living parable of his spiritual meaning. I found all of them intoxicated, not from the bubbling spring, but men's words. I found none of them thirsty, for the word, the bubbling spring. And my soul became afflicted, reduced to the level that the fleshly can accept for the sons of men, because they are spiritually blind in their spiritual hearts and do not have spiritual sight, the second eye, ear, etc. For empty, carnal, they came into the world, and empty, carnally too they seek to leave the world, satisfied with having only that one eye, ear, etc. But for the moment they are intoxicated on the empty, fleshly, earthly words of men. When they shake off the wine, strong delusion, drunkenness, the spring measured out by men, since they love not the truth, then they will repent and drink instead from his bubbling spring which he, not men, has measured out. Point 29. Jesus said, if the flesh, the lower level of the scriptures, came into being because of spirit that the higher, spiritual level is couched in the lower, physical level, it is a wonder. But if spirit, the higher level meaning, by means of the holy, elect children came into being because of the body, born of the woman, or the flesh and blood, reproducing after the lower, fleshly meaning of the scriptures, it is a wonder of wonders. Indeed, I am amazed at how this great wealth, the higher level meaning of the scriptures, has made its home, couched itself in this poverty, the lower level meaning of the scriptures. 30. Jesus said, Where there are three gods, as in the God of the Old, New, and Apocryphal Testaments, they gods, Jesus has become them. Where there are two testaments, the Christians, or one testament, the Jews, I am with him, until the end of the age. The three are the elect, the two are the Christians of the same house, and the Jews are the one and are another house, raise the stone, elevate the rejected testament, and there you will find me, the cornerstone, cleave the wood, seek the higher level in the New Testament, and there I, the logos, am. 31. Jesus said, No prophet is accepted in his own village, Jesus is not accepted by the Jews, no physician heals those who know him, Jesus cannot cure the Christians of their unbelief. 32. Jesus said, A city, the New Jerusalem, being built on a high mountain, Judeo-Christianity, and fortified in time by God's word, cannot fall, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, nor can it be hidden. The whole world will see it. 33. Jesus said, You hear, the lower level meaning, with one of your ears, but the other one, which understands the higher level, you have closed, preach from your housetops that which you will hear in your one ear, that which has been taught previously, the trees, or testaments, as well as, in the other, spiritual ear, that which was taught at first and rediscovered, the three trees, for no one lights a lamp, the word of God, Psalm chapter 119 verse 105, and puts it, the word, under a bushel, nor does he put it the word in a hidden place the word apocrypha means taken away and hidden but rather he sets it on a lampstand proclaims it in the church revelation chapter 1 verse 20 so that everyone who enters the kingdom and leaves the kingdom will see its light which is the high level meaning contained in god's word 
34, Jesus said, If a blind man, false Jews with their false image, or canon, leads a blind man, false Christians, who use this tactic as a reason to murder the prophets and exile the apostles so they can take over the church, they will both fall into a pit, the pitfall of seeing only the lower level, therefore captivity will be taken captive and those who kill with the sword of God's word must later be killed with that same sword of God's word. 35. Jesus said, It is not possible for anyone to enter the house of a strong man, the house of God under Satan's control, and take it by force, at the end of days, unless he binds his hands, builds a case against him for two thousand years, then he will be able to ransack, reveal the crimes of his house, expose the deeds of false religion, as well as the lie they base it on. 36. Jesus said, Do not worry from dawn, the initial revelation of the mysteries and keys in the early church, to dusk, the subsequent concealment and suppression of those mysteries and keys, and from dusk, the time of the suppression, to dawn, the seventh millennium, when the morning star arises in our hearts, about what food scriptures you will eat, accept, or what clothing you will wear, your particular denomination. You are much better than the lilies, the elite of the world, which is the field, which neither card nor spin, for the kingdom of God. And for your part, what will you wear, when you have no clothing? No religion will take you because you side with the prophets against them, who would add to your stature, lead you into your true nature, like Jesus, Moses and Elijah were during the transfiguration, it is he who will give you your true clothing, the righteousness of the saints, Job chapter 29 verse 14, Revelation chapter 19 verse 8, 37, his disciples said, when will you, the living word, become revealed to us and when shall we see you? Jesus said, when you disrobe, leave the religious establishment without being ashamed and take up your garments, denominations, differences, and place them under your feet like little children, the elect and tread on them, reject them, throw the small fish back into the sea, then, will you see, the son of the living one, and thus be like him, for when we see the son, we see him, and in seeing him, we become as his, and hence you will not be afraid, for he is perfect love, which casts out all fear. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. 38. Jesus said, Many times have you desired to hear, spiritually with the other, spiritually of these words which I am saying to you, and you have no one else to hear them from, as in this book? There will be days, the two spiritual days, or two thousand years, when you look for me, seek my meaning, or logos and will not find me, the meaning of these words. 39. Jesus said, the Pharisees and the scribes, and later, the early church infiltrators, have taken the keys of knowledge, of the higher level meaning, see also Luke chapter 11 verse 52, and hidden them behind the fleshly locks of earthly images. They themselves have not entered by knowledge of these keys into the kingdom, nor have they allowed to enter those who wish to, seeing as they saw the light within those images and suppressed them, thereby blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You, however, be as wise as serpents, the scribes and Pharisees, Matthew chapter 23 verse 33, 12, 34, etc., and as innocent as doves the elect. 40. Jesus said, A great vine, the false church, has been planted outside of the Father, the knowledge of the mystery, but being unsound, rooted in the teachings of men, it will be pulled up by its roots and destroyed by Jesus, the true vine, John chapter 15 verse 1. 41. Jesus said, whoever has something in his hand, the true wealth, a grasp on this concept, will receive more keys, revelations, insights, power, and whoever has nothing, the poverty, or no grasp on this concept, will be deprived of even the little he has, temporal power, power over the church. Point 42. Jesus said, become passers by, fast from the world. Verse 27, become solitary, etc. 43. His disciples said to him, Who are you, that you should say these things to us? 44. Jesus said, Whoever blasphemes against the Father, Old Testament era and scriptures will be forgiven, and whoever blasphemes against the Son, New Testament era and scriptures will be forgiven, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, who will lead us into a proper understanding of both the Old Testament and the New Testament, thereby revealing the Third Testament, will not be forgiven either on earth, the earthly argument against them will be compelling, or in heaven, the spiritual argument against them will be compelling. 
45, Jesus said, Grapes, the fruits of Christianity and the New Testament are not harvested from thorns. Christians, when they are worldly and rich, nor are figs, the fruits of Judaism and the Old Testament gathered from thistles, false Jews, synagogue of Satan, for they do not produce fruit, scriptural produce. A good man brings forth good from his storehouse, his heart leads him to the good fruit, an evil man brings forth evil things from his evil storehouse, which is in his heart, and says evil things, his evil fruit. For out of the abundance of the heart he brings forth evil things, which prevents people from recognizing the mystery. 46 Jesus said, Among those born of women, Adam after the flesh could be said to have been born a second time, by means of Eve's transgression and his subsequent acquiescence, from Adam until John the Baptist. There is no one so superior to John the Baptist that his eyes should not be lowered before him. Yet I have said whichever one of you comes to be a child, one of the elect will be acquainted with the kingdom as John the Baptist was and will become superior to John, because this time around, they will actually succeed. 47 Jesus said, It is impossible for a man to mount two horses' kingdoms or to stretch two bows fight both for band against each side, and it is impossible for a servant, an elect one, to serve two masters, God and Satan, otherwise he will honor the one and treat the other contemptuously. No man drinks old wine, old teachings, and immediately desires to drink new wine, teachings. And new wine, teaching, is not put into old wine skins, students followers, lest they burst, nor is old wine, teaching, put into a new wine skin, student, lest it spoil it as the old, false concept of the canon did to the early Christians. An old patch, teaching, is not sewn onto a new garment, religion, because a tear would result in a new religion. 48. Jesus said, If two, the old and new wineskins make peace with each other in this one house of God, they will say to the mountain, the world system, the religious establishment, move away, and it will move away. 49. Jesus said, Blessed are the solitary and elect for, being apart from the religious establishment, you will, through your labors, find the kingdom. For you are from it, we base our understanding on early Christianity, and to it, the original teaching, you will return. 50. Jesus said, If they, Jews and Christians, say to you, the elect, where did you come from? Say to them, we came from the light, higher level of the word, the place where the light, spiritual meaning, came into being on its own accord and established itself, and became manifest through their image, the lower, physical meanings. If they say to you, is it you? Say, we are its children, we are brought forth from it, in order to finish what was left for us to do. We are the elect of the living father, if they ask you. What is the sign of your Father in you? Say to them, it is movement and repose, to labor and to find life through it. When we rule, then we will rest. That we have at long last recovered the truth involves taking over the world and resting upon the word of God. 51. His disciples said to him, When will the repose of the dead, the Jews and Christians, come about, and when will the new world come? He said to them, What you look forward to, the teaching which was from the beginning, has already come, the original Judeo-Christian teaching, but you, because the keys were taken and hidden, do not recognize it. 52. His disciples said to him, At twenty-four prophets spoke in Israel, the twenty-four books of the Hebrew canon, later adopted by the Protestants, and all of them spoke in you. The traditional Christian teaching, that we would know Jesus through the canon. He, the living word of God, which is not subject to the dead, or the false Christians and Jews, said to them, You have omitted the one living in your presence, that the word of God uses books outside the canon, and have spoken, only of what the dead, false Jews and Christians have said. His disciples said to him, Is physical circumcision beneficial or not? He said to them, If it were beneficial, their father, the light within the image of the flesh, would beget them already circumcised in the flesh, from their fleshly, mother, physical, surface level teaching, traditions, etc. Rather, the true circumcision in spirit has become over process of time completely profitable, such that we can now transcend the fleshly teaching. 54. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, who have been deprived of the wealth of the spirit, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. The restoration of the keys and the higher level insight. 
55, Jesus said, whoever does not hate his father and his mother, Jewish or Christian, traditions, institutions, etc., cannot become a disciple to me, since their traditions prevent them from accepting the excluded scriptures that the biblical writers so plainly did accept, and whoever does not hate his brothers and sisters, fellow Christians and Jewish brothers and sisters, and take up his cross. Note, this is near the midpoint in the manuscript, there is a symbol here called a storogram, which no one ever tells you about. You can search for it on the internet. If you read the book as if this were a kind of hinge, reading 114 with the prologue, 113 with verse 2, etc., you will find that they are exists a discernible correspondence all the way to this midpoint. It doesn't follow our versification exactly but it is there. In my way, accepting the books that he and the New and Old Testament writers accepted will not be worthy of me, Jesus actually becoming new and restoring you to your proper stature. 56. Jesus said, whoever has come to understand the world and how it hides the spiritual behind a fleshly F.A.C.A.D.E. has found only a corpse, tradition, poverty, the word without spiritual insight and whoever has found a corpse that the worldly images serves this function is superior to the world, not subject to its delusion. 57. Jesus said, the kingdom of the Father is like a man who had good seed, the word. His enemy, Satan and his people, the Judases, came by night this 2000 year age of darkness and sowed weeds, false teachings, teachers among the good seed, word of God. The man, God, did not allow them, the angels, to pull up the weeds by revealing the truth before the 2000 years were up. He said to them, I am afraid that you will go intending to pull up the weeds, false, lower level teachings and pull up the wheat fruit along with them and since he didn't, we have this book that testifies against them in our time, for on the day of the harvest, the seventh day, or millennium, the weeds, false doctrines will be plainly visible and they will be pulled up out of the churches and synagogues and burned when the fire blazes and the sword the third testament and war between those of the two and of the three testaments breaks out 58 jesus said blessed is the man who has suffered from the 2000 years of false teaching and has overcome the world found life the keys the light of the higher level teaching 59 jesus said take heed of the living one while you are alive before the infiltrators rob you of the mystery contained within you lest you die become subject to the teachings of the dead and seek to see him the living one and be unable to do so the keys that would allow you to have been taken away and hidden 60 a samaritan those of a small and limited canon carrying a lamb on his way to judea he said to his disciples, why does that man carry the lamb, Christianity, around? They said to him, so that he may kill it with their own teachings and eat it, read it in their own way. He said to them, while it is alive, able to change them and bring them alive, he will not eat, read, accept it, but only when he has killed it with his own teachings and at the word has become a corpse, part of the corpus of scriptures only, lacking spirit and life. They said to him, he cannot do so, grasp the living word, otherwise. He said to them, you too, look for a place for yourself within the repose the time between the loss and recovery of the mystery, lest you, New Testament, and apocryphal New Testament writers, become a corpse, stripped of your higher meanings, and be eaten, accepted on the level of their dead understanding. 61. Jesus said, two types will rest 2000 year repose on a bed, the church, the one who will not become a disciple will die and the other, like Salome, will become a disciple and will live recover the mystery. Salome, mother of James and John, read Mark chapter 15 verse 40 alongside Matthew chapter 27 verse 56, said to him, Who are you, man, that you, as though from the one, the undivided, as opposed to those who divide God's word, have come up on my couch, where she eats and eaten from my table? Jesus said to her, I am he who exists from the undivided. I was given to eat some of the things of my father from her table. I am your disciple. I accept what you accept, therefore I say, if he is accepts everything in the scriptures, even those that refer to books outside the canon, he will be filled with light and thus live, but if he is divided, d-o-e-s-n-t accept all that Jesus seeks, or accepts, he will be filled with darkness, die. 
62, Jesus said, It is to those who are worthy of my mysteries who labor, seek, ask and knock in spirit and truth and find life, that I tell my mysteries. Give them the keys to unravel these mysteries. Do not let your left hand, those who do not know these keys, know what your right hand, those who knew and those who come to know, is doing. 63 Jesus said, There was a rich man, the infiltrators of the church, who had much money, the true wealth, or keys of knowledge. He said, I shall put my money to use, hide these keys and replace them with my own teaching, so that I may sow, reap, plant, for my own selfish purposes and fill my own storehouse with produce, for my own power and glory and gain, with the result that I, thus taking the kingdom by treachery, shall lack nothing. Such were his intentions, but that same night, the 2000 year age he died, himself lost the keys to the truth. Let him who has ears both levels of understanding, hear. 64. Jesus said a man had received visitors. And when he had prepared the dinner, the feast of God's eternal word, he sent his servant, the prophets, to invite guests believers. He went to the first one, the early church infiltrators, and said to him, My master invites you. He said, I have claims against some merchants, the false Jews who had hidden the keys. Verse 39, Luke chapter 11 verse 52. They are coming to me this evening, as the day or time of understanding fades away. I must go and give them my orders, imitate their ways, so that I may profit as they did. I ask to be excused from the dinner, I will not accept all of these scriptures. He went to another, the church shortly after the takeover, and said, My master has invited you. He said to him, I have just bought a house, established a church, and am required for the day. Like the day laborers who each get at an areas. I shall not have any spare time, my work is more important. He went to another, the Protestants, and said to him, My master invites you. He said to him, My friend is going to get married, marriage supper of the lamb, and I am to prepare the banquet. The canon shall be as I said it. I shall not be able to come. Because your banquet involves more of God's word than I teach or accept, I ask to be excused from the dinner. I reject your food, your scriptures, he went to another, the Christians at the end of the 2000 year age, and said to him, my master invites you, to eat, or accept all the books as the prophets have. He said to him, I have just bought a farm, I am completely invested by now, and I am on my way to collect the rent. It is time for me to cash in on my sheep who have nothing else now to believe in but me. I shall not be able to come. I ask to be excused, I reject these scriptures. The servant, the prophets, returned and said to his master, Those whom you invited to the dinner, the Christian religious establishment, have asked to be excused. The master said to his servant, Go outside of the religious establishment, to the streets, the Gentiles, the rabble, prostitutes and tax collectors as at first with the Jews, and bring back those whom you happen to meet, anyone good or bad, you, me, whomever, so that they may dine, except for words being revealed in the feast of God, S word, businessmen and merchants, religious leaders, See Revelation chapter 13 verse 17 Will not enter, by choice, the places of my father. 65. He said, There was a good man, God, who owned a vineyard, a church. He leased it, with the expectation of profit to tenant farmers, church leadership, so that they might work it and he might collect the produce from them. Though they actually wanted it for themselves, verse 63, he sent his servant the fullness of the scriptures, so that the tenants might give him the produce, fruits, mysteries, increase of the vineyard church. They seized his servant, the prophets, and beat him, them all but killing him, killed and eaten. The servant went back and told his master. The master said, perhaps the church before the Reformation did not recognize the scriptures. He sent another servant with the issue of the approval of the Apocrypha. The tenants beat verbally abused this one, these books as well. Then the owner, God the Father, sent his son at his second coming and said, perhaps they will show respect to my son when he reveals himself through the scriptures and the elect because the tenants, church leaders, knew that it was he who was the heir to the vineyard about to return. They seized him and killed him, denied him the third time, like Peter did. Let him who has ears at the time of the end hear. 66 Jesus said, Show me the stone testament which the builders, Jewish and Christian leaders, have rejected. That one is the cornerstone, keystone, or testament. 
67, Jesus said, Whoever believes that the all, the entire vol of God's writings itself is deficient, Jews and Christians, is himself completely deficient. Divided, 2, not 1, 68, Jesus said, Blessed are you when you are hated and persecuted by so-called Jews and Christians. Wherever you have been persecuted in your beliefs and the higher level understanding, they will find no place basis for it. 69, Jesus said, Blessed are they who have been persecuted within themselves, broken away from false teachings. It is they who have truly come to know the Father, do not receive what flesh and blood says, but the Father. Blessed are the hungry, for the feast of God's word, for the belly of him who desires to know the truth, the keys will be filled with the knowledge of the mystery. Point 7.0 Jesus said, if you bring forth what is within you, contained within the scriptures, what you bring forth, the mystery of the higher level meaning, will save you. If you, willingly, do not bring forth what is within you, the keys, the mystery, the higher level meaning, what you do not bring forth, from the scriptures, will destroy you, by keeping you bound up in the superficial meaning. 71 Jesus said, I shall destroy, this house, old Jerusalem, Judaism and Christianity, the grapevine planted apart from the Father and no one will be able to rebuild it because the lies they built their house on will be exposed in time. 72, a man religious leader said to him, tell my brothers, fellow Christians and Jews to divide my father's possessions, the scriptures, congregations with me. He said to him, oh man who has made me a divider like this man has. He turned to his disciples, those who knew the mystery of the undivided scriptures and said to them, I'm not a divider, am I? Meaning they know that there is only one true teaching, the large fish, sheep, etc. 73, Jesus said, the harvest, as the fruit of God's word, is great, but the laborers, the elect are few. Beseech the Lord, therefore, to send out laborers to the harvest. He said, O oh Lord, there are many around the drinking trough, the cannon, or that which contains the water or word, but there is nothing in the cistern. Their focus is on the cistern, or cannon, and so cannot draw out any more water or word from it. 75, Jesus said, many are standing at the door, the word, John chapter 10 verse 9, but it is the solitary who do not agree with the many who will enter the bridal chamber because they see things apart from tradition. 76, Jesus said, the kingdom of the father is like a merchant, religious leader who had a consignment of merchandise, his traditions, and who discovered a pearl, a stone, a testament which forms unseen and by way of irritation. That merchant, religious leader, was shrewd, like the wise fisherman verse 8. He sold the merchandise worthless tradition and bought the pearl, the unfailing and enduring mystery, alone, apart from tradition, for himself. You too, seek his unfailing and enduring hidden treasure pearl, which endures even to our time, where no moth, the early church, which ate the seed, or word, comes near to devour and no worm, the Protestants, who downgraded the Apocrypha, destroys. Jesus said, It is I who am the light which is above them all, luminaries of this world. It is I who am the all. From me did the all come forth, and unto me, at the end of time, did the all extend. Split discern both the spiritual and physical levels, a piece of wood, meaning the cross, the New Testament, and I am there. The light above them all, the higher level meaning, lift up, elevate, accept, proclaim, the stone, the rejected testament, the keystone, and you will find me there, the light in both sets of scripture. 78 Jesus said, why have you come out into the desert? Waterless place apart from the water of God's word, to see a read, the word canon is derived from the word read, shaken by the wind of God's doctrine. And to see a man clothed in fine, religious or secular garments like your kings and your great men? Who are all in collusion upon them are the fine garments, externals, or superficial greatness, association with an organization or religion and they are unable to discern the truth because they lack internal greatness, or true substance. 79. A woman from the crowd said to him, Blessed are the womb, Judaism, see Galatians chapter 1 verse 15, which bore you in the breast. Old and New Testaments which nurtured you. Christianity, he said to her, Blessed are those, the elect, who have heard the word of the Father, spirit level, as opposed to the mother, which is the flesh and blood level, and have truly kept it, as opposed to the Jews and Christians, who did not. 
for there will be days the two spiritual days the two thousand years given over to satan to try the church when you will say blessed are the womb which has not conceived true judaism christianity and the breast the word of god in its higher sense which have not given milk the teachings for those not ready for the meat of the word 80. Jesus said, He who has recognized the world, the worldly level teaching, has found the body, the corpse, or corpus of dead teachings, but he who has found the body, has found out about the death of the mystery, is superior to the world, exercises power over those worldly teachings. 81. Jesus said, Let him who has grown rich found the true wealth of the higher teachings be king, be granted the right to speak and to teach, and let him who possesses power, the elite and the rulers of the church renounce it, their authority. Jesus said, He who is near me, the word, is near the fire, trial and judgment, also persecution, and he who is far from me, the word, is far from the kingdom, the higher level understanding. Point 83. Jesus said, The images, the lower level meanings into which the higher ones are couched, are manifest to man, because they are the surface level meanings, but the light in them, higher level meanings, unveiled by the keys, remains concealed in the image, locked in the various names and objects actions, etc., of the light. Light, higher level meaning of the father he the father of lights will in due time become manifest but his image how he is hidden in the lower level meaning will remain concealed by his light which uses those images to hide itself 84 jesus said when you see your likeness what you yourself project onto the scriptures you rejoice because it suits you to see yourself and not god in them but when you see your images, recognize that they speak of you which came into being before you, and that they were written before these things happened and which neither die, continue to be passed down for the two thousand years, nor become manifest, since you do not recognize the light within them, how much guilt you will have to bear in that day. 85. Jesus said, The first Adam came into being from a great power, God, and a great wealth, knowledge, but he did not become worthy of you, who are entrusted with the truth. For had he been worthy to have the mystery revealed to him, he would not have experienced death. Fallen prey to weakness and ignorance. 86. Jesus said, The foxes, like Herod, who knew the truth which he got from John, have their holes their places within earthly institutions, and the birds, religious leaders, have their nests, high offices, but the Son of Man has no place, offers a position, to lay his head and rest. For the two thousand years, 87. Jesus said, Wretched is the body, lifeless Christian canon, church, that is dependent upon a body, lifeless Jewish canon, synagogue, and wretched is the soul, human reasoning, according to the secret book of James, that is dependent on these two, their superficial understanding of the two dead testaments. 88. Jesus said, The angels, the elect, and the prophets of the scriptures will come to you after the two thousand years and give you a proper understanding of those things you already have the two sets of scriptures, Old and New Testaments. And you too, give them those things which you, Jews and Christians, have money, power, resources, access to media, recognition, and say to yourselves, when will they, the owners of the field, or the world, come and take what is theirs, so we can remove our religious garments and renounce the world? 89. Jesus said, Why do you wash with the word, the outside, superficial nature of the cup, container of water, or word of God, meaning the canon? Do you not realize that he who made the inside, the hidden meaning of the scriptures contained within that canon is the same one who made the outside? The canon, or container in which the hidden meaning could be preserved for the two thousand years. 90. Jesus said, Come unto me, the logos, or higher understanding, for my yoke is easy to understand, and my lordship, unlike the Jews and Christians, is mild, and you will find repose for yourselves, from the labor and futility of the fleshly level understanding laid upon you by them. 91. They said to him, Tell us who you are so that we may believe in you. He said to them, You read the face superficial aspects of the sky, upper meaning, and of the earth, lower meaning, but you have not recognized the one who is before you, who is the heavenly and couched within the veil of the earthly, and you do not know how to read this moment, which is the heavenly logos presenting itself in the image of an earthly nature. 92. Jesus said, See, for the truth, and you will find keys, the mystery, etc.
Yet what you asked me about in former times, how to read the scriptures and which I did not tell you then, what they were not able to accept, John chapter 16 verse 12, now, at the end, I a desire to tell, unveil the meaning, but you do not inquire after it, since the traditions of men are accepted. 93. Do not give what is holy, the keys, mysteries to dogs, scribes, Pharisees, false Jews, lest they throw them on the dung heap, hide the keys, verse 39, Luke chapter 11 verse 52, do not throw the pearl, the keys, mysteries to swine, false Christians, lest they grind it to bits, obliterate, anathematize the keys, mysteries and higher level meanings. 94. Jesus said, He who seeks will find, and he who knocks at the door of God's word, John chapter 10 verse 9, will be let in. The word of God will open up to him and he will gain entrance into the kingdom. Jesus said, If you, those of the early church, have money, keys, mysteries, the true wealth, do not lend it at interest, as a buyer or seller, for your own gain, but give it to one, the elect who are to come, verse 109, from whom you will not get it back. 96. Jesus said, The kingdom of the Father is like a certain woman, the Holy Spirit. She took a little leaven, teaching, Luke chapter 12 verse 1, concealed it in some dough, scriptures, and made it into large, fine, loaves, testaments. Let him who has ears, two levels of understanding, hear. 97. Jesus said, The kingdom of the Father, which comes from a proper insight into the scriptures, is like a certain woman, the church, who was carrying a jar full of meal. Like the cistern, cup, or the twenty-four prophets, etc., a container full of the word and its understanding, the complete scriptures. While she was walking on a road, the road is representative of both traditions and time, that which has been traveled and taught before, so again, still some distance from home, the kingdom, the handle of the jar broke, the faulty concept of the canon led to the loss of scriptures and the meal, scriptures along with their understanding emptied out behind her in time on the road over time, due to this confusion. She did not realize it, the church took this tradition for granted because the Jews had done it before, she had noticed no accident, she imagined she was doing God's will. When she reached her house, when the church was centralized, organized and established, she set the jar down, established an official canon, and found it empty. Since all she was left with was the surface level understanding, like the empty cistern in verse 74. 98. Jesus said, The kingdom of the Father is like a certain man, Jesus, who wanted to kill a powerful man, Satan, in his own house of God where judgment begins 1 pt. 4.17. He drew his sword, the word, see Revelation chapter 2 verse 16, etc., and stuck it into the wall, the church's defenses, in order to find out whether his hand deeds across time could carry through. Then, when he had finished his works and had followed through on his word, he slew the powerful man, the devil, who through spirit of Antichrist, has run Christendom for two thousand years. 99. The disciples said to him, Your brothers and your mother after the flesh, Jews and Christians, are standing outside of the door, but will not enter. He said to them, Those here, who have entered through the door, who do the will of my Father, believe the one whom the Father has sent John chapter 6 verse 29, are my spiritual brothers and my spiritual mother. It is they, my spiritual family, who will enter through the door, which is the word, into the kingdom of my Father. 100. They showed Jesus a gold coin and said to him, Caesar's men demand taxes from us. He said to them, Give Caesar what belongs to Caesar, gold, coins, taxes, honor, etc. Give God what belongs to God, the truth he gave the keys, and give me what is mine. That is our own selves. 101. Whoever does not hate his father and his mother, Christianity and Judaism, as Ida cannot become a disciple to me, since they keep you from seeing him. And whoever does not love his spiritual father who disciplines us, and his mother who gives spiritual birth to us as I do, who brought him forth in spirit and truth, cannot become a disciple to me, since it takes spiritual rebirth and discipline. For my false, physical, mother religion, as opposed to his true mother below, gave me death the fleshly understanding, but my true spiritual mother, the comforter, gave me true spiritual life.
102, Jesus said, Woe to the Pharisees, who hid the keys. Verse 39, Luke chapter 11 verse 52, For they like a dog, an unclean animal, sleeping spiritually in the manger, where the food or word is of oxen, Jewish laity, who tread out the corn or word of God, for neither does he eat, except it, nor does he let the oxen eat, because they hid the keys and suppressed the truth. 103 Jesus said, Fortunate is the man, the elect of the early church, who knows where the brigands will enter, not through the door, but some other way, so that he may get up, to take countermeasures, muster his domain, attach the higher level to the lower by means of keys, and arm himself before they invade. Be prepared by so doing to recover his mystery in due time. 104 They said to Jesus, Come, let us pray today and let us fast. Jesus said, What is the sin that I have committed, that I should pray, or wherein have I been defeated? That we should fast from the mystery. But when the bridegroom leaves the bridal chamber, when people will search at the logos and not find it, then let them fast from the word of God and pray, forgiveness for having sinned and being defeated. 105 Jesus said, He who knows the spiritual father and the spiritual mother, the elect will be called the son of a harlot. He will come out of the great whore of Babylon, religion, see Revelation chapter 18 verse 4. 106 Jesus said, when you make the two one, recognize the spiritual light is couched in the earthly images by means of keys, you will become the sons of man, next level humanity, beings of light, and when you say, mountain, religious establishment, Babylon, Sodom and Egypt, Jerusalem, Rome, move away, it will move away. 107 Jesus said, The kingdom is like a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. Many different versions of Christianity, one of them, the largest, true Christian teaching, like the large fish of verse 8, went astray, for the sheep that was not of this fold, John chapter 10 verse 16, not the same type of Christianity as the 99. He left the 99 sheep and looked for that one, for 2000 years, until he found it. When he had gone to such trouble after the 2000 years, he said to the sheep, I care for you more than the 99, because this one was required to restore the fold to its original number. 108 Jesus said, He who will drink the word from my mouth, his words, rather than from a cup or cannon, will become like me. We shall see him as he is, know the truth and be set free from religion, which needs a cup or cannon. I myself shall become he, John Page, 947-37-39, etc., and the things that are hidden, the keys, the understanding of this and other scriptures, will become revealed to him. 109 Jesus said, The kingdom is like a man in the early church who had a hidden treasure, this spiritual level revelation in his field religion where the seed was sown across this worldly age without knowing it. The Logos was in the world but it did not know, John 1.10 and after he died, he lost sight of the keys, their mystery, and the scriptures being held back he left it to his son, the Protestants. The son did not know about the treasure. He inherited the field, the scriptures on an earthly level, and sold it, and the treasure of knowledge in the process along with the rejected books. And the one who bought it, the elect who believed the word, vent plowing, created good tilled soil in his heart for the word, and by doing so, found the treasure, the keys, mysteries, and the upper level meaning. He began to lend money at interest to whomever he wished, using the money given by one who would not get it back. Verse 95. 110 Jesus said, Whoever finds the world, the worldly understanding of our religion, the lower level meaning of the scriptures, and becomes rich, recognizes true wealth of the upper level meaning. Let him renounce the world, the field, which has brought forth such abominations as the destruction of the word of God and ourselves with it. 111 Jesus said, The false dichotomy which exists between the heavens and the earth, the keys, or heavenly meanings couched in earthly vessels, will be rolled up in your presence. Or perhaps rolled up into one, as in they become one before your very eyes, and one who lives from the living God, drinks the word from his mouth. Verse 108 Will not see death, will not lose sight of the mystery. Does not Jesus say, Whoever finds himself is superior to the world? and thus has the power to renounce and destroy it, such that it is rolled up in our presence. 
112, Jesus said, Woe to the flesh, the fleshly level interpretation that depends on the soul, reason, as explained in secret James chapter 3 verse 18, Woe to the soul, reasoning, that depends on the flesh, lower level, fleshly ideas that stem from not having the keys. 113, his disciples said to him, When will the kingdom come? It will not come by waiting for it. It must be sought for, asked for, knocked upon, found, received and opened up to us. It will not be a matter of saying, here it is or there it is, in the sky or sea, as our leaders may tell us, verse 3. Rather, the kingdom of the Father is spread out upon the earth, hidden in earthly terminology in other words, and men do not see it. Because the keys have been taken and hidden. 114 Simon Peter, the church, said to him, Let Mary, out of whom the seven demons of the age of flesh were cast, leave us, the women, those who through the flesh deliver us into the world of the flesh, are, uh, or by this analogy anyway, would seem to be, not worthy of life. The church cannot imagine Jesus transforming the lower, physical, or female into the upper, or spiritual, or male. Jesus said, I myself shall lead her, that is, the world itself unfolds as Jesus would have it, in order to make her male, cause that which brings forth beings of flesh to cease, and to instead bring forth spiritual beings, so that she too may become a living spirit resembling you males, living spirits. For every woman, fleshly person, for even we men are called the bride of Christ, who will make herself male, spiritual, will enter the kingdom of heaven, because he makes us like himself. This is original Bible scripture which has been removed from the Bible and is still known to many Catholics. These are the prophetic spoken words of Jesus Christ himself made to a man named Thomas. They describe perfectly this very point in human history, giving a very detailed and 100% accurate explanation of the Mandela Effect. You, me and all other Mandela affected folk are described by Jesus himself as the elect humans who have been deemed worthy after 2000 years via our individual thirst for truth and knowledge to whom have been granted the keys of life, death, heaven and the knowledge of everything. Just as Thoth describes too. We are end time angels, here to replace the evil elite of this world, those who stole and kept hidden this knowledge from the rest of humanity to benefit themselves. Currently we're going through a process of transformation into the highest spiritual form that humanity can achieve or as Jesus puts it, we will become known as the elect angels of the third testament yet to be written.